targeted a patrol just south of the Mardin province, killing a soldier and wounding seven others. This brings the number of Turkish security forces killed by the PKK since the fighting began two weeks ago to 16. Turkey and the PKK entered a ceasefire in 2012 and started negotiations on a settlement of their multi-decade war. This round of efforts appeared to be over, at least for now, as Turkish officials talk up more attacks and the PKK suggests Turkey can no longer be trusted. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports a massive wildfire that has flamed nearly 50,000 acres in Northern California's dehydrated wine country continues to worry officials who have barely been able to get a handle on the blaze after four days of trying. The Rocky Fire in the Napa Valley has destroyed at least 50 structures so far and is threatening 6,300 more, according to officials. The blaze is so far 5% contained, the same containment figures firefighters reported Friday evening. Winds and dry vegetation in the drought-stricken region have only served to fuel the flames, which officials said nearly doubled in size between Saturday and Sunday. The Rocky Fire is burning in Lake, Yolo, and Calusa counties, which lie in the northeast of the San Francisco metropolitan area. The Napa Blaze is one of nearly two dozen wildfires burning across the state of California on Sunday. On Thursday, a South Dakota firefighter died while assisting the U.S. Forest Service in fighting the Frog Fire near Aden in Modoc County. California has been mired in a severe drought since 2011, which has upped the wildfire risk considerably. Governor Jerry Brown on Friday declared a state of emergency. So far, 24 homes and 26 outbuildings have been destroyed by the fire and numerous communities have been evacuated. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. FANS are friends, allies, and numeracy supporters. FANS help FPP afford to produce more original content. You can join the fans program for as little as $3 per month or any amount of Bitcoin per month thanks to the recurring payment options provided by Coinbase. To learn more or to join the fans program, visit fans.fppradio.com. Reuters reports NAACP leaders launched a 40-day march across the U.S. South on Saturday with the rally in Selma, Alabama, drawing on the city's significance in the 1960s civil rights movement to call attention to the issue of racial injustice in modern America. Organizers of America's Journey for Justice want to build momentum behind a renewed national dialogue over race relations prompted by the killing of a number of unarmed men by police officers over the past year. NAACP leaders at the rally urged marchers to honor the memories of New York's Eric Garner and Cincinnati's Sam DuBose, two of the unarmed men killed in police confrontations. The march, which would cover nearly 900 miles, began on Selma's historic Edmund Pettus Bridge, where police beat peaceful marchers with clubs and doused them with tear gas in 1965. That infamous confrontation was a catalyst for the passage of the landmark Voting Rights Act, signed into law 50 years ago this week. The march will feature teach-ins and other events in five states as it makes its way to the nation's capital, where organizers hope to draw thousands at a final rally on September 16th. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Saying that he was giving his co-workers at Marley Publishing just a few more days to catch on to him, local mentally unstable man Michael Redding told reporters he planned on exhibiting one or two more warning signs this week before, quote, finally doing this. I think I'll do just a couple of disconcerting things in front of people here at the office, maybe give them a day or two to take action through the appropriate channels. But if that doesn't happen, then I'm going through with it. The fully unhinged Redding, who plans on, quote, making this thing happen sometime next week, claims that despite displaying erratic and worrisome behavior around the office for the past few months, his actions have gone completely unreported by his coworkers. I definitely talked about my frustration with life in general, and I even discussed my fascination with all sorts of violence. But that still didn't throw up any red flags. We'll see if anyone catches on. Mike? I don't know him super well, but he's nice enough. He's quiet and he keeps to himself mostly, but I'm sure he'll come out of the shell. Just a matter of time. The 
This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. You can join us toll free. And you can bring up anything that you want. You can also hit us up on Skype. Now, we do have... And I'll give you those uh, numbers here in a little bit. We've got all kinds of stuff to talk about tonight, including the things libertarians don't understand from Raw Story. Mark, we teased this last night. Let's jump into that, and then uh, we'll talk more about the Cheshire Fair outreach, Bitcoin outreach booth that Derek J. and I spent the bulk of a week uh, full-time, eight hours a day, uh, operating this thing. And uh, there's some some interesting experiences and some sad experiences to share, and there was a lot of fun uh, to be had. So we'll uh, share that with you, and our toll-free number, if you want to join us, is 855-450-FREE. Uh, again, Ian, Derek, Jay, and Mark in the studio. Mark, jump in uh, the Raw Story for us. Yeah, um, so this is, it's a list here from Raw Story, and it is just so <sighs> poorly done, uh, you know, just like so a hack job. Yeah, it's it's really it's it's a hack job, and I I want to read it word for word because I think it's worth that. Greta, There's seven Christina. different things. Though, yeah. right? the, the the title is here are seven things that people who say that they're fiscally conservative but socially liberal don't understand. Okay. It, wait, it's the implication that you can't be this thing. You can't be the combination of socially liberal and fiscally conservative. When it, what the implication is is when you say this, what you're actually supporting is. You know, bigotry and a whole bunch of other things. So um, um, let's go on. And and you hate poor people and old people and everybody who's, uh, you know, disenfranchised. Okay. Well, I want to know what I don't understand because we're always learning and I could be wrong on some stuff. So, yeah, I'd love to hear this. From Greta Christina here at Raw Story. Well, in quotation marks, well, I'm conservative, but I'm not one of those racist, homophobic, dripping with hate Tea Party bigots. I'm pro-choice. I'm pro-same-sex marriage. I'm not a racist. I just want lower taxes, smaller government, less government um, regulation of businesses. I'm fiscally conservative and socially liberal. Hmm. How many liberals and progressives have heard this? It's ridiculously common. Hell, even David Koch of the Koch brothers has said, I'm a conservative on economic matters and I'm social liberal. Well, it's wrong. W-R-O-N-G, wrong. Oh, shout at me. That'll make it more acceptable you can't separate fiscal issues from social issues they're deeply intertwined they affect each other economic issues are often are social issues and conservative fiscal policies do enormous social harm that's true even for the mildest most generous version of fiscal conservatism low taxes small government reduced regulation a free market these policies perpetuate human rights abuses. Oh, my. They make life harder for people who already have hard lives. Well, I certainly want. I uh, do not want to be behind human rights abuses, so I'm, I'm very interested to hear I what... want people to have easy lives, right? Who doesn't want people to have easy lives? Oh, I mean, that's a nice idea. Because obviously, if, every, if, if people who have easy lives don't have easier lives, then we all wouldn't have easier lives. I don't know. None of this hmm. makes any sense, right? Like, no. I work my butt off. What the heck is an easy life? Um, well, I mean... Uh, who doesn't want to have an easier life? I mean, I think that that's true. I mean, over time. Me too. Where's you, my check? We want to see more time for leisure and less time for work. And I think that as you look at sort of the history of man, that there is more time for leisure these days than there was previously. Look at all the time people they spend say that primitive man, on a bunch of nonsense. The hunter-gatherers actually, um, especially males, had uh, a lot more leisure time. Who's, and again, they were really? swatting flies yeah, most Aren't of they it. running through the forest like trying to capture food and yeah. stay alive and not freeze to death? I'm not I mean, that would seem like something that would take up a lot of time. I'm Maybe I'm wrong about that. Could be. Um, let's see. These policies perpetuate human rights abuses. Um, even if the people supporting these policies don't intend this, the policies are racist, sexist, classist, obviously, ableist, homophobic, mm. transphobic, and otherwise socially retrograde. Mm. In many ways, they do more harm than so-called social policies that are supposedly uh, separate from economic ones. Here are seven reasons that fiscally conservative, socially liberal is nonsense. All right, that's good. Okay. I, 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 I'm ready for I'm number one. I'm primed, aren't yeah. you? But yeah. I want to go to AC first in Ohio. AC, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Derek, Jay, and Mark. 
Uh, before I get to my point, I just wanted to uh, say, um, King Mark Edge, I'd just like to let you know that the giant circular saw blade you request is almost done, uh, is almost complete construction. What are we going to do with the giant circular saw blade? Well, we're gonna cut. You wanted us to uh, cut Canada off the top and attach to Australia, so they won't bother us anymore, right? Cut, we're cutting <laughs> off Canada and attaching them to Australia. Fine, I'll take it. Can you like saw off Washington D.C. Send that thing out into the Atlantic too? That's a great <laughs> idea. Sure. I donate to that if someone could actually pull that off. I wouldn't yeah. mind New Hampshire oh. being a little uh, island off someplace too. AC, what do you got? Go ahead. Okay. Anyway. Um, I recently uh, discovered this guy on YouTube, who uh, this American guy who lives in Japan, and he does all types of videos about living there. It's a really interesting, interesting channel. And the interesting thing about this guy is, I'm looking at him. I've been looking at him for a couple days. I'm like, you know what? He kind of looks just like you, Mark, and almost sounds like you. I'm just curious. Now you were given up. A, you were adopted, right? I was adopted. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any chance of any long lost brothers out there you might be thinking about? I wouldn't know. What's the dude's name on YouTube? Um, I actually posted one of his videos to your guys. I just got done posting a video to his to your guys' uh, Free Talk Live Facebook page, so you guys can check it out. Because he's right. a lot like Mark. Yeah, we'll take a look at that. We'll see if we can get his name. And thanks for the call, AC. Appreciate it. Uh, a doppelganger, perhaps a long lost twin, maybe, or just a brother. Uh, 855 450 free. That, uh, that would be kind of interesting if that was true. Anyway, let's uh, move back to the uh, seven things, Mark, that libertarians just don't understand. Number one, poverty and the cycle of poverty. Mm. Now, this is a big one. Poverty is a social issue. The cycle of poverty, the ways that poverty itself makes it harder to get out of poverty, the way that poverty can be a permanent trap lasting for generations, is a social issue and human and a human rights issue. If you're poor, there's about a two in three chance that you're going to stay poor. So um, 66% per chance, percent chance that you're going to stay poor at least a year, and mm -hmm. about a two in three chance that if you pull out of the uh, poverty you'll be poor again within five years. Mm -hmm. And about a two in three chance that your children are going to be poor. Among other things, being poor makes it much harder to get an education or job training that would uh, help you get higher paying work. Even if you can afford job training, it's available for free. Are there any citations for these claims? Cause, or it's like, available I, free. I'm sorry. I don't agree with that. Like, you can get free education online now Stanford University mm. and lots of universities they just give away their courses for free so well, this, she's right is is that there is a cycle to poverty what um, she has not yet made clear to me and will not make clear to us that that cycle of poverty is better or worse than it was in the past mm. so like the incentives that we have today in the United States are the incentives we have right you can claim they incentivize the cycle of poverty I do sure the welfare program certainly does that or you can claim that they don't do enough to get people out of the cycle of poverty. But nobody would claim that they're good, right? Well, I mean, as far as the cycle of poverty goes, one of the things that's keeping pe poor people poor are government regulations. So economic uh, controls, economic you know, uh, laws and such that keep them from being able to create wealth for themselves. A poor person cannot go and open up their own restaurant in their home, for instance, in most cities. If they're found out, now some people will do it anyway, but if they're found out, uh, they'll get raided and they'll be fined and possibly arrested for just simply wanting to run their own home business and serve their neighborhood and serve their customers. Uh, and that's just one example. You know, there was the uh, Dr. Mary Ruart's book, Healing Our World, where she gives the example of the young lady, a uh, uh, black girl who was doing African hair braiding, mm -hmm. and she was shut down once the newspaper wrote a story about her. That they wanted uh, her to have a cosmetology license. Right. Of course, the cosmetology license didn't teach you to do African hair no, braiding. No, it was a thousand hours of uh, teaching about other kinds of cosmetology, not what she was doing. And so those are just two examples, of sort of uh, case studies, of how it is that poor people are kept poor by uh, you know, government regulation, which, of course, a so-called fiscal conservative would probably want to get rid of that government regulation, which I would argue would help poor people. If you have more than one job or if your work is menial and exhausting or if you or if both of these are true, often the case is if you're uh, which you're, the case is if you're poor, there's a good chance you won't have the time or energy to get that training or to look for higher paying work. Being poor typically means you can't afford to lose your job. It sounds like me, you know, <laughs> most of my life working my butt off. All right, there's more coming up here in moments. You can share your thoughts on poverty 
855-450 free. Does government alleviate it or does it extend it? Make it more difficult, make it more likely. It's Free Talk Live. More coming up. If you could choose any school in the country to earn your college degree and be on your way to a better life, would you choose one the Wall Street Journal recognizes as producing some of the best qualified graduates? Or one the Princeton Review ranks as a leader in undergraduate education? Or maybe one the U.S. News & World Report names among the most innovative schools in the country? Now, you don't have to choose. At Arizona State University, we want to help you learn to thrive in life. At ASU Online, we offer over 100 graduate and undergraduate programs on your time and schedule. You receive the exact same curriculum, degree, and prestigious faculty as the on-campus students, and we're universally recognized as one of the innovators in online learning technologies. For information, call 1-800-595-9736. U.S. News & World Report ranked ASU in the top 10 best places to earn an online degree. So learn to thrive with ASU Online. Call today at 1-800-595-9736. That's 1-800-595-9736. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a Go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. Cato University is the Cato Institute's premier educational event of the year. It's being held this year from July the 26th to the 31st at the Cato Institute's state-of-the-art headquarters in Washington, D.C. This annual program brings together outstanding faculty and participants from across the country and often from around the globe, with everyone sharing a commitment to liberty and learning. Cato University is a genuine community, and you can freely share viewpoints, concerns, ideas, questions, and more in an atmosphere of friendship and personal respect. It's a one-of-a-kind program for people who don't stop thinking after they got out of school. It's for people who don't want politicians or bureaucrats or officials to do their thinking for them. It's for people who value liberty. You'll learn, you'll be inspired, you'll make new friends, you'll meet great people from around the world. All of the details are spelled out at the Cato website, cato.org, and they hope to see you there this summer, July the 26th through the 31st in Washington, D.C. Again, details are at cato.org. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross has been sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. Now, an appeal is Ross's only chance, and he needs your support. Please visit FreeRoss.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Visit FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Yeah! Welcome back to more Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here 
855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. Coming up, we've got more of the things libertarians don't understand. We're on number one. This is according to Raw Story, and they're talking about poverty and claiming that there's this poverty trap and so on, so on and so forth. And my uh, perspective on this as a liberty-minded person is that the the reason why poverty is a trap is because the government prevents you from getting out of it. It's no fun to be without uh, wealth and resources, and it's even worse when you can't create any wealth for yourself because some government bureaucrat is demanding that you hand over a bunch of money to him and his buddies and all of their contractor friends uh, beforehand. You know, classic example of this is all of the required equipment you have to have to have a legal commercial kitchen. No, you can't just, you know, flip the fan on in your kitchen and, uh, you know, start cooking on your stove if you're going to sell food to somebody. No, you have to have a fancy vent uh, hood and a range that's, you know, $200,000 or something ridiculous like that. I've never actually priced this out, but I do know some entrepreneurs who have uh, looked into opening their own restaurants, it's ridiculously expensive in a lot of places. That keeps poor people from being able to offer their services and their talents to the marketplace and essentially restricts it to only those with the means, only those with uh, you know the money to do so. So if these you know supposed lefties really care about poor people, why you know they should be arguing to eliminate government regulations. Of course, that's always sold as though it is uh, some kind of a... Uh, Koch Brothers conspiracy to help the rich people. You can share your thoughts with us at 855-450-FREE. Uh, the, the way to protect yourself online, whether you're a Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, Linux user, Pro XP, Pro XPN is a great start. Now, you probably should also add PGP and do some other things to maximize your protection, but Pro XPN is an awesome way to encrypt your internet connection to prevent cri criminals from sniffing out your Wi-Fi packets and your own internet service provider from spying on you online. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL. And when you use code FTL50, you'll get 50% off the regular monthly price when you buy the annual account. And that, by the way, is good for the lifetime of the account. Breaks it down to about $5 per month. You get unlimited bandwidth with their premium account, as well as servers around the world. You can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. Plus, ProXPN doesn't keep records of your online habits at all. So go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. There's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. And you can use promo code FTL50 to get a, that great discount on privacy that is priceless. Let's go to the phones and the fun. We'll talk more about poverty here in moments. You can also share your thoughts on whatever. We've got Gabriel. He is on the line in New Mexico listening to Kiva. Go ahead, Gabriel. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, great, Gabriel. Go ahead with your thoughts, please. Yes, uh, uh, Planned Parenthood. Um, I wanted to talk about that. Uh, my thoughts about it, uh, I was just talking to this lady that used to work for um, some company that did that. Uh, I just think it's um, very sickening. Uh, what is what is sickening? I mean, Planned Parenthood does a lot of really good work. So, what are you referring yeah. to? What, what is sickening? Um, just, just just the things that I've seen and uh, what things have from, you seen? Um, well, not seen, but heard uh, oh. uh, testimonies from other people. Like uh, about what? They, pick one, okay? Because we don't uh, have time to go uh, through a laundry list of yeah. complaints. So there's a video one. out right now of them claiming that. The, uh, the, 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 I'm the asking him. Um, that are uh, uh, they keep it secret. They uh, uh, they, they they keep the secret. Like the, the 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 woman that has the abortion, if she passes away, they keep that secret. And, what are you talking uh, about if no, a woman has a, an abortion and passes how, away? How do they hide a dead person? Well, there's going to be family members who will probably be missing her and who may have actually accompanied her to the Planned Parenthood facility. Are you saying that they don't report uh, deaths publicly? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so do, also, so I can I understand why somebody wouldn't want to fund uh, planned, planned Parenthood through the government. Thank you, Gabriel, for the call tonight. Certainly, people are upset about the idea of abortion, and I don't would prefer not to get into a uh, a lengthy discussion about that particular issue. But that's one of the services Planned Parenthood does. It's they also, the thing they're known for. I think it's like what ninety seven percent of their budget is goes. I heard it was the other thing. The um the the, the act, STD exact testing op um, opposite. Yeah, it would seem to be that it would be more like STD stuff because no way. It's an abortion mill. I mean, that's just really. The facts. I mean, come on, is that true? Because, yes. Because that's you know where else do you go to get STD testing that is affordable? Your doctor. 
is affordable. I mean, do they include that with uh, with insurance? Planned I don't Parenthood know about insurance. Planned Parenthood isn't the only option. I mean, yeah. um, you know, I, I'm from a city, and that wasn't the the number one where people go. I mean, it's a it's another uh, government thing, but mm. it's it's not Planned Parenthood. Planned, oh, okay. So the, you're saying the other option there besides also, Planned Parenthood, yeah, there's was also some sort free of government, government services. Yeah, so called free services. Yeah. So I mean, I can understand for. why somebody wouldn't want the government to fund Planned Parenthood. That makes sense. Government yeah. shouldn't be funding any kind of charitable organization. Or whatever, each individual should be, you know, deciding how to allocate their funds. And if I feel like I want to fund Planned Parenthood, obviously I should be free to do that. But uh, I can understand why somebody would be upset about that. And and certainly, I imagine there are some questionable things going on within that organization. I saw the video where they're they're eating over dinner and discussing like fetal fetal body parts or something like that, distributing yeah. them and selling them. And that certainly seemed a little mercenary. You know, no doubt about that. As I understand, there is some, um, some of, uh, you know, some that's been debunked to some extent. Oh, I don't it? know the specifics okay. are. I have no interest. I, and to me, abortion is the ending of a human life. Mm-hmm. I don't really, I have no interest in a place that, uh, you know, does that sort of business. And my tax dollars shouldn't go there to, to support it. My tax dollars go to lots of killing I'm not interested in. Yeah. Like, that's what governments do. They're organizations claim a monopoly privilege in the use of violence in a given landmass. Yeah, to me, it doesn't matter if Planned Parenthood gets defunded. I mean, I'll still be supporting them for STD testing purposes. And if there's another option that provides affordable STD testing for people, I'd love to hear about it in Keene, New Hampshire, not necessarily in in Philly. I don't know about it unless it is the welfare department or something like that. So it says here 97% of its services are focused on breast, cervical cancer screening, HIV screening, counseling, yeah. contraception, 3% on abortion. That 13, makes sense. 13% Maybe think about it. according to politifact.com comes is the revenue generated by that uh, smaller amount of abortion. So abortions are, you know, they're profitable. Yeah, that's, I mean, again, that that doesn't surprise me at all. If you think about it, Derek J., there are a lot more people that want to know if they're clean STD-wise than get an abortion out there, right? Because men and women can have STDs, and not everybody wants an abortion, but most people do want to know if they're clean. So that doesn't surprise me. Share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE. Jonathan's in Atlanta you're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Jonathan. Hey, how you guys doing today? Good, go um, ahead. So I'm, I want to give you a quick background to my question before I ask the question. I just recently switched or moved from Maryland to Georgia, so I haven't registered to vote here yet, and I'm not sure which direction I want to go. So back in the 2012 election, I was a hardcore neocon, but now I'm a converted libertarian. Um, but last week, um, Ian had mentioned that he's a lifelong libertarian liber- uh, in the Libertarian Party, but he admits the Libertarian Party has been infiltrated. Mm. Mark is a Republican, and he's one of those Republican Liberty Caucus guys. Georgia's an open primary state, so I'm not worried about if there's a Republican that I want to support, um, that I have to be registered Republican to vote for him in the primaries. So I have that freedom here. But I just want to get your guys' input as to... How do you decide in today's day and age which party to go with? We'll find out. Stand by. It's Free Talk Live. KDArmor.com is your one-stop shop for the most affordable body armor, period. With packages starting at $169.99 and free shipping on every order. KD offers soft armor and rifle threat rated armor up to level 4. Go to KDArmor.com and get your body armor today while you still can. Mention this ad and receive a free tactical scarf for a limited time with any body armor package. That's KATIArmor.com. Come and take it. It's so lonely here. I can barely stand it. I'm waiting for you to stroke your keys and unload over GCNlive.com slash community. Oh, come on. I know you have things to share, and there's a whole place waiting for you to share them. Light some candles, pour yourself a drink, and get cozy. Log in at GCNlive.com slash community. Lots of people are satisfied. Why not satisfy yourself at GCNlive.com slash community? I'm waiting. Get out of the friend zone at delicious.com. Hi, I'm Daryl W. Perry, and I need your help to give away my newest book. Yes, you heard that right. I want to give away my newest book, A Rebel's Journey. 
The book describes my path to the ideas of liberty, which began as a search for traditional values. I will only give away the book if I reach my fundraising goal of $2,500. But wait, there's more! If you donate, not only can you get the ebook and the audiobook for free, but you can get bonus audio content, including interviews with Jeffrey Tucker, Lynn Albrecht, Ben Stone, Gardner Goldsmith, and Stephen Kinsella. Or you can get a signed copy of the paperback book and more. Your donation will serve to replace the profits I would have earned through a more traditional publication of the book. The funds raised will allow me to get the book into the hands of more people and to promote the book to a wider audience. To find out more about the book or to donate, visit arebelsjourney.com. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live. Join us right here, toll free at 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. Joining you in the studio tonight, it's Ian. Derek J. And King Mark. Derek J., the host of Flaming Freedom, which is a super gay, friendly talk show. Not all the hosts are always uh, gay. Yeah, they are. Not all, no, really? I thought you yeah. had a couple straight people in there at one time. Nah. No? That must have been a previous they're, they're edition. Just, yeah, they're guests of the sometimes, show. <laughs> but not, not co hosts. You pretty hosts, much think gosh. everybody's gay, we, though, right? Yeah, well, uh, you is know. Is Ian gay? No, the, a lot of people are like. Are um, you claiming Ian's not gay? I'm not, sh- I'm not sure whether you're. Oh I, oh, I hope he's gay, is, ah. is the. Uh, <laughs> You know, anyway, anyway, Flaming Freedom, yeah, it is on every Thursday night, and you can get your daily dose of uh, gayness over there at flamingfreedom.com if you want to check out our past episodes. I love it. It's a great show, and uh, you should definitely check it out, and it's so cool that it's heard in Africa now as well yeah. on LRN.fm. Yeah, uh, Yeah, I heard you talking about that, and so I imagine in quite a few countries there, uh, that is uh, could be quite it's a It's not shocker. okay to be gay yeah. in a lot of those places. So It's uh, quite illegal in some, some of them. Oh, yeah. I understand. So, uh, flamingfreedom.com for more Derek J. And also, thederekj.com yeah, that's is my site. website for even more. Uh, let's go back to Jonathan, though, in uh, Atlanta. Now, Jonathan, you were telling us that you were talking about choosing a political party. We've got Daryl producing here in our studio tonight. He says uh, that apparently you can't even choose a political party in Georgia. Were you aware of that? Huh. Well, I've heard that, but then I've heard... I don't know. Georgia's a really weird state. I haven't really figured it out completely. But I know when you go to the poll, you have to pick 
um, when you go to vote, you have to pick which party you're going to affiliate with. Okay. That's what we were told was not the case, but maybe, you know, he didn't live there in, in Georgia and he's just, you know, Googling. So perhaps that's that's changed. Um, but so you're wondering how to do that. And, you know, regardless of whether in Georgia that is or is not possible, you could still obviously join a political party uh, and support them or not. And there are people in other states who may also be wondering, you know, how to make these choices. So you're wondering which party to choose? Yeah, just because I'm basing this off of um, Ian's comments last week when he when you when you're mentioning the fact that you're a libertarian member, but you'll admit that the Libertarian Party has been infiltrated from you know outside sources. Um, and then Mark, who said that he's a Republican, yeah. Um, well, and we we all know how screwed up the Republicans are. So is the Libertarian Party today? I know way back when when they started, they were a great party. But are they worth giving your time, your think, registration to, your money to? I think it depends on uh, a few different factors. Now, I'm saying this as somebody who is a life member of the Libertarian Party for a number of years. Uh, I am currently not a, a member of the national LP. I am a member of the local LP, the New Hampshire Libertarian Party. And I can't say I've been particularly impressed with the New Hampshire Libertarian Party. They're a fairly actually weak group, and that's because up here— uh, you can only register as Democrat or Republican when you're registering to vote. And so a lot of people just don't even – it's just not even on their radar. And plus, liberty-minded people, libertarians and anarchists and voluntarists, have been getting elected as both Republicans and Democrats here in New Hampshire. So it seems to be more expedient to work within the other parties here. But all that said, I appreciate the work the libertarians are doing, and I want to see them have more success. So given the choice – I'm going to choose Libertarian because they're the party that most closely represents my views. And certainly you could argue that within both the Democratic and uh, Republican parties, there are Liberty caucuses. And those are the, you know, the small, tiny voices shouting in the darkness in most parties trying to get them to pay attention to the ideas of freedom. I would say the RLC probably has an undue amount of influence in a place like New Hampshire. Uh, and, Mark, maybe you can comment to that. But in Georgia, I don't know what level, if at all, the RLC has any kind of impact. The value – okay, so um, what's important to note is is that uh, voting in a primary is different um, than registering as a member of a party. Those are different things. Yeah, uh, he's maybe, asking about registering right. a party. So the value in some states, many states, is to picking one of the two major parties is being able to vote in a primary. Your vote in a primary is far more valuable than your vote in a general sure, election. Sure, but usually it's, you're wasting your time anyway because these people are all scumbags from top to bottom in the Republican and Democratic parties. I mean there's really no difference, but not a dime's difference between – the average candidates in these uh, these races. That's that is up to the people who are deciding to vote. Voting yeah. is a mathematically insignificant act. If you choose to participate in it, do not expect to have a great deal of influence on what occurs. Um, what I like from the Libertarian Party is they provide me with candidates on a national level for whom I can vote um, that I don't feel bad about. Uh, voting for don't don't feel as bad about voting for uh, because you know they they have some concern about small government that kind of thing so that's what i like for the libertarian party um if you're going to work within some kind of system there you got to fig figure out which party is going to be most closely aligned with the issues that are important to you work with those people and uh, you know that's what you do don't think that voting really matters uh, don't waste your time w worrying about voting yeah, because to me, the, statistically it is an insignificant act the benefit of working with and promoting the libertarian party is that they do serve as a gate for people, like the first level of introduction to liberty. There are a lot of people, and we touched on this with Dr. Mary Ruart the other night when we had her on the show, that there are a lot of people, myself included, who came to the ideas of liberty because they found a Libertarian Party candidate, because they found somebody who was actually a principled individual, and by the way, not all of them are, but uh, a lot of the people who do run for office as libertarians are pretty principled folks. And so they're getting the message of freedom out there. And to me, that's something worth supporting, not some sort of, you know, weak Republican who might sound like he's freedom oriented on some issues, but ultimately is going to push through more government in the ways that he wants to see more government. So I guess, you know, there's to me, there's no real reason to stomach being in the Republican Party or the Democratic parties in most places. Uh, but up here in New Hampshire, it's a different story, right? So I think that really just depends. Uh, I don't know what the Republican Liberty Caucus is like in Georgia. I imagine it's pretty weak. 
Mark, I mean, do you remember in Florida, were you ever involved at all in the RLC down there? Yeah, they had a convention, the state the state convention in Florida at one point. I mean, I'd say that they were, you know, they had some activity going on. So the RLC itself of Florida had right. a state, state they, convention? No, they had the, uh, the national convention in Florida. I see. Yeah. This year they'll have it in New Hampshire. So I don't know. That doesn't really give you uh, much. Derek J., you're probably pretty apolitical on this question, right? Yeah, I don't care about voting at all. And when it was time to register to vote here in New Hampshire, you know, I just— uh, I could register for undeclared. the party the same day. Yeah, yeah. but I, I went in. What was unique uh, here was I didn't need a uh, driver's license or anything. Of course, I had one, but um, I wanted to test out the process right. and see what it was like, and I was successful. So, and so I got you to register for a couple of friends. In <laughs> gotcha. New Hampshire, you can register as undeclared is what you're saying. When you go in, you can pick your party in a primary. Yeah. Which is really nice because that allows you the flexibility of, oh, wow, there's this guy over in this primary that is actually worth voting for. In New Hampshire, you can just go ahead, walk in. Register for that party in that moment, and then as you walk out, you can go back to being un, uh, undeclared. Right, and it, and it was especially tough. It was really up to the minute I walked into that polling booth that I was not decided. I mean, Ron mm. Paul was a Republican, but on the other hand, Vermin Supreme ran as a Democrat. What did so you choose? I chose Ron Paul, uh, okay. thinking that that would make some kind of difference, but of course I was wrong. So, listener, uh, yeah, your vote doesn't matter. I actually ended up voting for Ron Paul as a Democrat on the Democratic primary. <laughs> oh, and he came in second. That's fun. Oh, hey, cool. In New Hampshire. Wow. So, Jonathan, and I mean, as a Republican. Does that give, that's true. Jonathan, does that give you any kind of uh, assistance? <laughs> the answer is it depends on what you yeah, want. Yeah, it does. In Georgia, the um, Eric Erickson's joke of a project, a red state project or whatever he calls it, um, is real big. And I don't know if that sounds awful. our Liberty Caucus <laughs> is involved in them. And if they are, then that scares me. But, so, um, so what I mean, you guys are basically saying is this is an issue you need to look at on a local level, not necessarily a national level. Yeah, that's what I, I would say that'd be the most important. But, you know, are you going to really change Georgia politics? I, I don't know well, about that. Yeah, I mean, if, if you right. want our opinion on it, our opinion is, is if you care Hampshire. enough to get involved in politics, you should care enough to move to New Hampshire. Yeah. Not everybody can do it. And there have been some pretty impressive things done by pro-liberty folks, um, even through the political process, outside of the state of New Hampshire. Sure, but, but they're the usually just trying to stop something from happening that's all we're doing at they're this not point. getting that's not true mark we're getting people elected that's there are true, dozens of people elected all across new hampshire who are liberty-minded folks uh you know actual principled libertarians jonathan thanks for the call and the question tonight i appreciate it there's more on the way you can bring up whatever's on your mind if you want to learn more about new hampshire check out 101 reasonsfilm.com it's free talk live Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. By now you know that wireless technology like cell phones do in fact pose dangers to the health and privacy of everyone. Blockit Pocket's wide range of products are unmatched in providing the protection you deserve. No scare tactics, just common sense. BlockitPocket.com offers quality American-made options to alleviate and eliminate these invisible dangers. Learn more at BlockitPocket.com or call 888-315-9618. BlockitPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. Our digital freedom is under attack. Look no further than Ross Ulbricht's life sentence to see that. 
After all, it's not Ross's freedom they're after. It's yours. It is bigger than Ross and bigger than a website. I think one website is by far less dangerous than the government trampling on our rule of law. The appeal is underway, and we've organized a grassroots fundraiser at thecryptoshow.com backslash free Ross. Up for grabs is Cody Wilson's Ghost Gunner, A Week in Costa Rica, My Magic Mud, Ghost Outside the Machine t-shirt. These prizes are really great. There's a ton more, so go to thecryptoshow.com slash free Ross. Please tell all your friends, share it up. Our grassroots tactics allow for 100% of all funds raised to go directly to freeross.org. So check out thecryptoshow.com backslash free Ross. And don't forget freeross.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. So you've signed the Shire Society Declaration and are planning your move to New Hampshire to be around more liberty-oriented people. Next, sign up for the Shire Society Forum at forum.shiresociety.com. There are a bunch of people there who are already in the Shire, and they want to meet you. If you're already in the Shire physically, you should also come by the forums. Remember, not everyone uses Facebook. New people are signing up for the Shire Society Forum every month, so drop in and say hello at forum.shiresociety.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. We're back. More Free Talk Live. 855-450-FREE is our toll-free number. That's 855-450-3733. ExpressCoin is the best choice for getting cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin. You can get them all over at ExpressCoin.com. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. They're a licensed money services business, and you can get your cryptocurrency with money, order, or check. Start off at ExpressCoin.com, whether you're in the U.S. or Canada. You can also do it from your smartphone via their app or straight through their website at ExpressCoin.com. Use coupon code FTL, like Free Talk Live, and you'll get up to $40 worth of cryptocurrency with absolutely no transfer fee at all. Just go to ExpressCoin.com with coupon code FTL. As we go back to your phone calls and thoughts, we'll come back to more of the things libertarians don't understand. Plus, Derek J wants to talk about the $70,000 minimum wage. Some company decided, or the boss man at some company decided to start paying his employees quite a bit of money. But there have been some, I guess, unforeseen consequences to that. Um, if we get a chance, we'll discuss that with you, plus the uh, outreach at the Cheshire County Fair. First, we go to Wallace in Vermont. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Derek J and Mark. Hi, guys. Hey, Wallace. I just thought you guys would like a heads up. It's not often that uh, you can get uh, one governmental agency uh, to basically get on top of uh, a couple of others, but I've got sort of a reverse of that. Uh, I don't know whether I should mention the particular federal court, but anyway, I sent you guys an email. You want to take a look at your emails and and see. Yeah, I'm way behind uh, on email right now. Can you just summarize briefly what you're calling about for our listeners? Yeah, the uh, the, the uh, U.S. District Court here in uh, Rutland, Vermont, is located in the Postal Building, uh, U.S. Post Office in Rutland. And uh, as you guys probably know, I'm disabled. I go from a wheelchair on my bad days to a, a rotator walker on my uh, better days. Well, this post office basically has all kinds of crazy violations of the Americans with Disabilities Act, which is 25 years old last month, 25 years for them to get educated. Well, I wanted to file an action against the uh, local municipality where I'm living mm -hmm. in uh, southern Vermont under the ADA. So I tried to get to the courthouse, 
And uh, as I said, they have a parking lot and basically owned by the Postal Service, which, of course, is the United States government. They've got a huge sign that says, warning, no parking is allowed for court proceedings in the post office parking lot. Vehicles will be towed at the owner's expense. Well, it seems that you've got to walk about five blocks. Wow. To basically get to the courthouse hmm. and go upstairs to the second floor, which, as I said, the post office is downstairs. So Do they I have said, an elevator? Oh, they have an elevator. Right. But, but you have to get, get there. to the courthouse first. Yeah. And, and that's the problem. Yeah, that does sound like a problem because, uh, you know, if the government is going to demand that you use their facilities, they should provide the access to, you know, people who are crippled to to do that. They provide the access, right? (laughs) (laughs) It's ridiculous what they're doing to this guy. And I'm not in favor, by the way, of everything this Americans for Disabilities Act does. You know, it does a lot of things that force uh, requirements on small business owners, as I understand it, that make it very difficult. You know, like a lot of buildings, for instance, old buildings have to be grandfathered in because they just don't have a way for a wheelchair to uh, to access the building. Uh, so it makes it you know expensive in a lot of ways for business owners to offer their services, if even if they're not necessarily tailored to uh, people who have uh, physical dif- difficulties. One thing that's nice about it is it's not funded by anything. Um, it's just a set of rules, and basically people who care about the issue can take people to court who aren't um, you know, abiding by the rules. So at least there's not a bureaucracy that's behind it. Okay, I didn't know that. That's I guess that's good to know, but we do see, Mark, plenty of friv- you know frivolous and outrageous claims being made against businesses. I there's, would not claim otherwise. I remember hearing about one guy. Wallace, thanks for calling tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. Good luck with your case. Uh, I remember hearing about one guy in Brattleboro, Vermont, who goes around and brings these cases against, I think he's an attorney or something like that. Yeah, it's probably his only uh, line of work. Right. He goes around and brings cases under the ADA against innocent business owners who haven't jumped through whatever all the arbitrary hoops are that they've jumped through. Oh, you're... You know the bathroom door isn't wide mm, enough. Not enough or, space here uh, for people to get yeah. out on your in your handicap parking space. Yeah, you don't have a ramp, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this guy just goes around looking for these violations and then sues and likely settles with these companies rather than going through with the lawsuit because then they, you know, okay, okay, we'll 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 spend the hundred thousand dollars and we'll correct whatever these issues are and give you twenty thousand to go away. Yep. You know things like that. That's how that looks. Yeah. So uh, speaking of. Uh, poverty, because that'll certainly impoverish a small business owner. And this is a good reason why uh, it takes us right back to the discussion we were having about being uh, poor and having the government preventing you from being able to open your own business. If you want to be able to serve food out of your kitchen legally, first of all, in most places it wouldn't be allowed. But secondly, even if it was, then somebody come after you for the ADA if you open the door publicly, right? Like they'd sue you for it. And so I can understand why people who don't have a lot of resources are intimidated by the process or just pure unable to go through it. One thing, just speaking about the ADA, one thing about uh, my fire department, the re, you know, I'm on this committee to build a new fire uh, station uh, in my uh, fire department. One of the reasons that they need a new fire department is because our current one is not ADA compliant oh. for the disabled firefighters mm. <laughs> you know like it's it's really it's a funny thing i mean it's not a staffed station it's not like somebody could roll on up there in a wheelchair and get a permit for something right it's it's just a station where you go to get the truck when it's time to right nobody gets permitted fire no one gets permitted for anything so at there's the no station. reason for the public to be there unless uh you know basically somebody's going by in a wheelchair and says i need to use the bathroom mm. and uh then you know they roll on in and they're like we can't get you into the bathroom we have to roll a truck out and you know do yeah. a variety of things because the station was built in 19 56 and it's basically a barn right <laughs> you know and so anyway that's one of the reasons that they got to get a new station is because it's not ADA compliant so let's I go think that some of these well-intended laws build resentment too like a lot of business owners would be happy to provide extra whatever access uh, people would need but when they're forced to do it and it costs them a lot of money and it's a startup cost and they're not ready to do it it builds this uh, resentment towards yeah. the disabled like oh they, they're causing all these problems for me but Those they're not dark- Iron cripples They're are not. of my business. It's not them. It's the government that's forcing people to and do this. And a few busybodies. Right. Well, yeah, those lawyers. 
Well, we so need them. There's plenty of uh, you know, disabled folks who make their living off of uh, ADA uh, compliance issues, too, no doubt about it. But they're not the majority. Many, most disabled people just want to get in and do business with yep. you and get out. And they'll do their best to figure out how to get in and out of their vehicle, get up and down, whatever the issue, right. whatever the stairs or whatever it is. This is they'll, something they'll do the, their best. the market will handle. If we don't have an ADA, the market will handle it because of competition. If you don't have access for people who can't physically move about easily, then somebody else will provide that. You know, if it's home, if you're like a small mom and pop uh, hardware store, you know, Home Depot will give those people the access. If you're not willing to provide it, somebody else likely will in the marketplace, and then they'll be, you know, they'll look good, and you won't look so good. And so, why not just let the market handle this? Mark, you had started out the show with a story from a raw story about seven things libertarians. Don't understand. Right. This first one's on um, the basically Poverty. poor people tend to stay poor. Being poor typically means you can't afford to lose your job. Who can afford to lose their job? Um, which means well, you can't afford people, to. You need, if you have savings, you can have a nice little. What percentage of the population do you think has savings? Not very much. 5%? No, I don't know. I don't know. It's probably higher than that, but not much higher than that. 15%? See, this is the thing that uh, is not being shown by this is that basically um, everybody's poor by these standards. I can't, uh, you know, most people can't afford to lose their job. So going on, which means that you can't afford to unionize or otherwise push back against your wages and working conditions. It means that a temporary crisis, sickness, injury or job loss or death in the family can destroy your life. You have no cushion. Nobody you know has a cushion. A month or two without income, you're totally screwed. If you do lose your job or if you're disabled, the labyrinthine bureaucracy of unemployment and disability b benefits is exhausting. This, this is That's true a for anybody. problem, right? right this, for whom is this statement not true? 76% of Americans. If you have an injury Americans. or job loss or sickness that, uh, that the labyrinthine unemployment Employment I just, and disability benefits are exhausting. I googled your question, Mark. 76% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck as of a June 20, 2013 story at CNN. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it at all. So you're, you're talking about three quarters of America qualifies as poor by this person's standard. Mm -hmm. That's not poor, people. That's something entirely different. Poor has to be. If you're even a... a, a a fair um, uh, discussion of poor is perhaps the bottom quintile, 20% of the population. All right, we're going to come back with uh, your thoughts. They're welcome if you want to join us at 855-453-855-450-3733. Ian, Derek, Jay, and Mark in the studio here on Free Talk Live. Hour two's next. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. For over 75 years, Geico's kept an eye on the future keeping customers happy with things like 24-7 customer support and emergency roadside service. And to prove it, here's one of our commercials from over 75 years ago. At GEICO, we promise to always find innovative new ways to serve you. In fact, we're so innovative, in 75 years, they'll listen to this old radio commercial and think, wow, they were innovative. Wow, we are innovative. GEICO, saving people money for over 75 years. Why are you playing a slot machine sound for an online poker site? Do you have a poker sound effect? Because we have a new advertiser, swcpoker.eu. Brought to you by the same guys that did seals with clubs. Now they're called swcpoker.eu. It's Bitcoin Poker 2.0. They have lots of new games, including Chinese poker. The Krill leaderboard is active now. It's Bitcoin Poker from the brand you trust, swcpoker.eu. Get on over to swcpoker.eu and start playing now. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. 
You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, August 3rd, 2015. Silver is trading at $14.72 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,092 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $286. Antiwar.com reports with Kurdish warplanes continuing to pound their site in northern Iraq, the Kurdistan Workers' Party, PKK, has launched multiple attacks against the Turkish military yesterday, killing three and wounding dozens of others, some of them seriously. The larger attack was a suicide bombing by PKK militants driving a tractor full of explosives who attacked a military outpost near the border with Iran. The blast killed two Turkish soldiers and wounded 31 others. The toll is expected to rise as at least four or are in grave condition. Another attack overnight targeted a patrol just south of the Mardin province, killing a soldier and wounding seven others. This brings the number of Turkish security forces killed by the PKK since the fighting began two weeks ago to 16. Turkey and the PKK entered a ceasefire in 2012 and started negotiations on a settlement of their multi-decade war. This round of efforts appear to be over, at least for now, as Turkish officials talk up more attacks and the PKK suggests Turkey can no longer be trusted. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports a massive wildfire that has flamed nearly 50,000 acres in Northern California's dehydrated wine country continues to worry officials who have barely been able to get a handle on the blaze after four days of trying. The Rocky Fire in the Napa Valley has destroyed at least 50 structures so far and is threatening 6,300 more, according to officials. The blaze is so far 5% contained, the same containment figures firefighters reported Friday evening. Winds and dry vegetation in the drought-stricken region have only served to fuel the flames, which officials said nearly doubled in size between Saturday and Sunday. The Rocky Fire is burning in Lake, Yolo, and Calusa counties, which lie in the northeast of the San Francisco metropolitan area. The Napa Blaze is one of nearly two dozen wildfires burning across the state of California on Sunday. On Thursday, a South Dakota firefighter died while assisting the U.S. Forest Service in fighting the Frog Fire near Aden in Modoc County. California has been mired in a severe drought since 2011, which has upped the wildfire risk considerably. Governor Jerry Brown on Friday declared a state of emergency. So far, 24 homes and 26 outbuildings have been destroyed by the fire and numerous communities have been evacuated. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. FANS are friends, allies, and numerous supporters. FANS help FPP afford to produce more original content. You can join the fans program for as little as $3 per month or any amount of Bitcoin per month, thanks to the recurring payment options provided by Coinbase. To learn more or to join the fans program, visit fans.fppradio.com. Reuters reports NAACP leaders launched a 40-day march across the U.S. South on Saturday with the rally in Selma, Alabama, drawing on the city's significance in the 1960s civil rights movement to call attention to the issue of racial injustice in modern America. Organizers of America's Journey for Justice want to build momentum behind a renewed national dialogue over race relations prompted by the killing of a number of unarmed men by police officers over the past year. NAACP leaders at the rally urged marchers to honor the memories of New York's Eric Garner and Cincinnati's Sam DuBose, two of the unarmed men killed in police confrontations. 
The march, which would cover nearly 900 miles, began on Selma's historic Edmund Pettus Bridge, where police beat peaceful marchers with clubs and doused them with tear gas in 1965. That infamous confrontation was a catalyst for the passage of the landmark Voting Rights Act, signed into law 50 years ago this week. The march will feature teach-ins and other events in five states as it makes its way to the nation's capital where organizers hope to draw thousands at a final rally on September 16th. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. After this morning's police raid on Cosmopolitan Magazine's male pleasure laboratory revealed that test subjects were forced to endure horrific abuses and inhumane living conditions, Onion reporters spoke to 23-year-old Daniel Chertok, one of the numerous men exploited for the monthly magazine's studies on erotic stimulation. It was awful. It drove us wild for days on end. Once they made me lather myself with gallons of sexy bath oils and then read thousands of racy text messages until my eyesight began to blur. Then for the next 12 hours, they blasted sultry songs into my ears and made me simulate 50 crazy hot sex moves. They said I couldn't rest until they found the bliss button on my Randy regions. According to Chair Talk, test subjects were often subjected to hours of grueling experimentation at the hands of female scientists. Chertok added that many of his fellow subjects were not lucky enough to survive the excruciating treatment. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. Our toll-free number to join us here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Coming up, the war on chalk and some other observations from the super fun time that Derek J., uh, Chris Cantwell, and myself had, as well as some other great activists uh, at the Cheshire County Fair. We'll talk about some lessons learned and you know, what our experiences were here and why that you know why you should care. Uh, 855-450-FREE is the number. Also, when we get the chance, we'll return to more of the story that Mark brought in from Raw Story about things libertarians just don't understand. Uh, according to Raw Story, we were only on number one, which is all about poverty. And I don't think I don't know how far are we through that number one there. Mark? We haven't gotten to the point where I don't understand yet. Yeah. Uh, OK. I mean, right. like, well, let's um, ki- let's pick that back up then. I'm really interested in knowing what I don't understand about poverty going on here from the raw story. Is is just basically, um, you know, the the claim is is that, uh, ironically, poor go, going on. Uh, poor is be, being poor is expensive. You can't buy high quality items that last longer and are a bargain in the long run. Where are these items? Please, tools. Dear God, somebody point me at them. Tools. Uh, so some tools are super cheap and they break. Yep. The uh, super cheap ones. There are tools that are not so cheap and they have lifetime warranties and guarantees on them. So go to yep. Big Lots versus Sears, right? Yeah, the I don't think that they're always worth it. Um, I've I've had cheap tools that have expensive tools, and I can tell you some oh, cheap I tend tools to agree with you. Do, tend to do a pretty good job. I'm not out there turning wrenches all day for a living. I tend to agree if with you. So if you I'd don't, have a snap on. You, right. If you don't use tools professionally constantly, then yeah, it can make sense to buy the cheap tools. I'm I, just giving you the example. You asked for the example. I will give you an example, though. I bought a weed eater for like 100 bucks or something from Home Depot, a home light um, at one point. And it was probably a pretty good weed eater for the first two years. After that, it began to break down, mm. and I'd have to pay somebody to sort of fix it. And I'm like, and then it's running slow, and I'm like, please fix this. And I paid, you know, kept on paying money to try to get it fixed, and it wouldn't work my, to my satisfaction. At You've some already point, bought another weed eater right. right at some point i should have um i just i just recently last week i'm like i am not dealing with this thing anymore i took it out and it's like blowing the grass down <laughs> and i just i went and i i got in the truck i drove to the local still dealer and i bought um and i told them my problem they said why don't you come they saw me coming right why don't you come over here to the commercial section and mm-hmm. uh, they sold me a com- the lowest level commercial weed yeah. eater. and i get out there and i feel like that guy from uh, home improvement i remember <laughs> tom whatever and i'm just like hey. and running that baby and we it feels good we need some weed eating done here come on if you want to feel good come on bring it over here <laughs> it feels good i don't I, no i'm sorry i got plenty of things to do on the little, uh, on the farm uh, to, okay. to weed eat. Uh, clothing good. clothing is another area where a little bit of quality goes a long way yeah. uh, where you 
you bu- invest in a little bit of quality for a, a jacket or some dress clothes, they'll last you a lifetime. The that's right true. jacket, that's true. Um, so, uh, you know, for but men, t-shirts? for instance... What's that? Oh, but, t- I yeah. don't know any high quality right. T shirts. Right. I mean, if you're getting um, Armani Exchange, sometimes they got some nice T shirts. Yeah, they have some great T shirts, but I don't know if they'll last you a long time because T shirts get dirty, right? Like they've got they catch the under they yeah. catch your deodorant. Um, you spill things on them. That's yeah. the kind of stuff. A lot of times, cheap clothing's a better choice. I've had true. twenty dollars shirts that do me as good as the two hundred dollar tailor shirt that I got from a client that uh, you know I had in Sarasota, Florida, who did tailored shirts. The real key is to use a thrift store and get the high quality stuff for a very low price. Yeah, that's then you're putting your mm. time in to go shopping. Oh, uh, you know, that sounds that's awful. <laughs> to you. <laughs> All right, let's go. Keep okay, going. going back. So, ironically, being poor is expensive. Uh, you can't buy in bulk. You sure as heck can't buy a house, depending on where you live. By the way, buying a house, not really a cheap thing to do unless you want to have a garden or have a big dog or something like that. There are good reasons to get out of poverty if you possibly can, for sure. But No, I'm, I'm talking about so renting, though. Renting, is a, in, in many cases, is a better idea in this economy than, than buying. Many places, right, it that's depends. the case. I mean, if you're going to be staying in one place and you know it... Uh, then you can usually get a mortgage for much cheaper than rent. What's the time frame on that? Time frame on what? How long you have to stay in one place? Uh, you probably for your life. If you're ready to settle down and you know have a house, then it makes more sense to buy it than to rent it. If you expect to be someplace that long, yeah. then I'm I'm with you. I've heard the number seven years. Um, that's an old standby, but I don't think right now necessarily that's a good idea. What you need to consider for yourself as a young person is is. Do you want to be responsible for everything that breaks? Mm. Because that's what that's what being a homeowner is. Yeah. And it's a really terrible idea because people tell you buying a home is a good idea and a good money-saving idea. Mm. I'm not sure that that's the case because a lot of people don't okay. know where they're going to be in 7 I years. I see what you're saying. Right. Yeah, if you don't want if you don't know where you're going to be, then yeah, you shouldn't be buying a house. That you bought a sense. house previous to this one were you there 7 years? Nope, I was not. Was it a money-making proposition? No, I lost money. That's on what that. I was saying. I mean, look. Like, I'm these, not advocating somebody buying a house unless they're in. This finic- person who wrote yeah. this article is. No, she's just saying you can't afford a house. That's all. She's saying if you're poor, you can't afford a house, and she's, she's absolutely saying, right about that. Being poor is expensive. That's it's the true. suggestion is that be, owning a home is a cost-saving idea. Mm-hmm. It can be. It can be if you choose to live in the same place. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. A lot so of people she's right. don't. She's not, she's not incorrect on that point. She's it's incorrect if she's poor. giving advice to people generally because people generally do not live in the same place for seven years. I don't hear her giving advice. Say, she's not saying go out and buy a house. She's just making the statement that it's expensive. She's you can't right. afford the time or money to take care of your health, which means you're more likely to get sick, which which is expensive. If you don't have a bank account, which many poor people don't, you have to pay high fees at checking um, check cashing joints. By the way, if you do yeah. have a bank account, you're likely paying high fees to the bank. If you have to run into that's what I'm saying. Oh, if you yeah. have to run into a uh, you don't get any overdraft fees uh, when you don't have a bank account. Yep. If you run into a temporary cash crisis, you have to borrow from p- price gouging payday advance joints. Mm. Um, I'm just looking at an article here from the yeah, those things suck. The Daily Mail that says nearly half of American households would not be able to afford a $400 emergency without borrowing money. Wow. I'm not sure who these poor people are she's talking about. It sounds like they're normal. You're like normal Americans sadly do not manage their money right. That's like, true. Um, you know, being poor may not be an issue of being poor, uh, being poor may be an issue of poorly handling your money. That's absolutely uh, what being poor is about. In, in a lot of a cases, lot of ways. in a lot of cases, it is not all of them. Some people are. Some people can't work, right? Mm-hmm. Some people are just disabled and they can't work, or they're sure. um, got mental That's issues, why there's and charity, whatever it is. Going on. Um, a limitation that's even, excuse me, um, if you can't afford a car at all, you're severely limited in what jobs you can take in the first place. Mm. A limitation that's even more severe when public transportation is wildly inadequate. If you're poor, by the way, how many bus, how many buses around America are riding around empty? If you're poor, lots of them. You may yeah. have a uh, have a lot uh, have to move a lot. That's expensive. These aren't uh, universally true for all poor people, but way too many of them are true for way too many people. Okay. Second chances, once considered a hallmark of American culture and identity, have become a luxury. One small mistake or no mistake at all can simply be the mistake of being born poor can trap you in poverty forever. Plus, this statement is backed with nothing. <laughs> okay. Um, I think that more than one mistake. See, this is the problem is, is that I spent eight and a half years in prison. Um, I didn't. Yes, my mother gave me a place to live when I got out. Mm-hmm. But really, I didn't have anything else. I got 
you know, I moved on in life by getting a job and going to work. Yeah. You can't tell me that there's no opportunity for people to work their way out of poverty in America. I just don't believe it. Well, there's of course there's opportunity, but there'd be a lot more of it if there weren't so many government regulations in their way. She's not complaining about government regulations. I know. I haven't I yet you. got. Like you said, we haven't yet gotten to the point of her explaining what we don't know. Uh, things we don't know. In case you hadn't noticed poverty, including the cycle of poverty and the effect of poverty on children, disproportionately affects African Americans, Hispanics, and other people of color, women, trans people, disabled people, and other marginalized groups. So what does this have to do with fiscal policy? Well, duh, poverty is perpetuated or alleviated, worsened or improved by fiscal policy. There's not um, that's not the only thing affecting poverty, but it's one of the biggest things. To list just a few of the most obvious examples is of the very direct influence is tax policy, minimum wage, funding of public schools and universities, unionization rights. So what this person banking is and saying lending laws. is that these things need to have we need to have more of it, right? So a higher minimum wage. This person is saying there need to be more of these government programs. Tax policy does ad adversely affect poor people. There's no doubt about it, especially um, taxes on liquor and alcohol and right. those sorts of things. But that's not what she's saying. Right? No, she's not. Yeah. Right? Like we agree that on the, but, but she's going to go on. All I right. can assure you. Oh boy. All right. 855. We're going to have to do one of these per night. Yeah, I think These so. are uh, pretty uh, in-depth. 855 450 free. And then still to come, uh, speaking of the minimum wage, Derek J. has some commentary on that, as well as the uh, Cheshire County Fair. We'll give you a recap. 855-450 free allows you to join us here on the radio waves to bring up what you want. We've got Skype as well. It's Skype username lrn.fm. More free talk live coming up. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now, don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Shortly after having sexual intercourse with a prostitute earlier this afternoon, local man Jacob Reynolds told reporters that he never expected the experience would bring him to new heights of emotional and spiritual fulfillment. I was convinced that having sex with a complete stranger behind my wife's back would leave me feeling drained and empty on the inside, but my self-esteem is through the roof. Reynolds, who said he paid $150 for a 30-minute block of time, said that his moderate expectations for the encounter were instantly surpassed by what turned out to be a deeply personal sexual communion that transported him to a new plane of emotional intimacy. I've never felt a stronger sense of spiritual connection. When our bodies met, there was an immediate sense of familiarity and comfort that just washed over me. I think it was the most meaningful experience of my life this is the onion news network you can listen to free talk live on the radio podcast satellite webcam and our live streams but did you know you can listen to free talk live from any phone anywhere 
Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. This is your Robertson Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Monday, gold is down $4 at $1,091 per ounce. Silver is $0.07 cents lower at $14.76 per ounce. Bitcoin is trading at $284 U.S. dollars. At Robertson Roberts, we like buying metals just as much as selling them, maybe more. To find out how, give me a call, 800-874-9760, or visit our online store at rrbi.co. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Join us on the radio. 855-450-FREE is our toll-free number. Also, Skype on in. Skype usernames LRN.FM. With you in the studio tonight, it's Ian. Derek J. And King Mark. Hey, Derek J., you've got cell 411. Yeah. How do you how do you feel about it? I love it. I keep it on my main page so that I am always ready to use it. Cell 411 is a decentralized micro-social network that allows you to maintain, or rather manage, create, and respond to alerts and emergencies in real time. Let's say you're like Derek J. and myself, and you are relative, uh, relatively active cop block folks. You go out and you uh, hold the police accountable by recording what they're doing to people. Well, there's actually a cop-watching or cop-blocking alert in cell 411. Also, neighborhood watch groups. Uh, there's a I'm viewing crime being committed alert. There's also stuff for medical emergencies as well. Uh, so there's a lot of different alerts you can send out to the people that care about you in this app. Now, everybody has to have the cell 411 app for it to work at all, uh, but it works very, very well. Once you and one other person get this app, or more than one, uh, then you can instantly send alerts when something is wrong, and as much as we don't want it to go wrong, eventually something in life is going to go wrong. So better to have a tool at your disposal that you can use that will actually give your location to your friends, to your family, to your neighborhood watch group, to whoever it is, your activist group. You can actually choose which group receives the alert that you're sending. Uh, so go to Cell 411 on the Google App Store, download it. It's, I think, all of 99 cents and... 99 cents if it gets somebody in an emergency to respond to you is well worth the cost. So look for Cell, C E L L 411 on the Google App Store. We're still waiting to uh, get approved by Apple. We'll let you know when that happens. All right, back to uh, your calls and thoughts and then more about poverty, where Raw Story is going to tell us what we don't know, supposedly what we don't understand as libertarians. But first, Richard's in Texas. You're on Free Talk Live, Richard, with Ian, Derek, Jay, and Mark. Hey, thanks for taking my call, fellas. Yes, sir. Yeah, I just got – you say it's okay to talk about anything. Is that it correct? is. You're on Free Talk Live. Please do. All right. Yeah, uh, we got we got a problem in America, and two of them are that uh, most of us are connected to some kind of religion, either by, by way of our families or our coworkers, or we are all uh, personally attached to one. And we so all you're have, saying that – well, before we get to problem number two, you're saying that religion itself, that people have religion – is a problem? No, I'm saying that uh, I was going to get to it, uh, but I can answer that question. Yeah. Because nobody wants to really face what the 501c3 have done to their specific religion or their father's religion or their mm. brother's religion. Interesting. I mean, if we could shut that down, can you imagine how many more people we would have in the field to fight the fight that you guys are fighting, to actually speak on what's really going on with global warming, what's really going on in the Middle East? was really causing the drug wars. But the best speakers on the planet, which is the mm -hmm. clergy, basically, they have the most charisma. Most people love them for one reason or another. Even if they don't go to their church, they still respect them. But they have literally completely sold out in the worst kind of way to the devil, the 501c3, to one of the most evil men in history, Lyndon Johnson. I completely agree uh, with where you're coming from on this, Richard. That's why, uh, Mark, you and I are ministers in the Shire Free Church. It's part of the sort of the free church movement, which I'm sure you're well aware of. Uh, free churches 
for our listeners who don't know, are those churches who are specifically avoiding 501c3. What is still 501c3? Completely, still completely within the tax uh, tax law. I mean, you Mark, know. can you explain briefly for listeners, just what's this 501c3? I mean, we don't, shouldn't jump to the conclusion that everybody knows it's what It's a that designation means. within the tax law where you go within and Within the IRS ask, tax yeah, code. Within the um, tax code where you ask the government, um, hey, can we uh, be without taxes? Churches don't need to ask this. Churches right. have been around longer than the, the, the tax but code. But that's not what the lawyers will tell you. When, of course not. When you, lawyers aren't required to fill out any paperwork for a free church. Yeah. So the lawyers will tell you, oh, well, you want to start a church, do you? Well, you're going to need 501c3. Don't worry. You can hire me for X thousands of dollars or whatever it costs, and I'll walk you through the process. And so probably once, get legal Zoom, too. Once the churches do that, uh, then they become beholden to the government's rules. And what you're referring to, Richard, with people not being able to speak, is that one of the rules of a 501c3 is that a church that is has sought the 501c3 that that has been granted it can no longer take positions the like the the ma- the uh, ministers can no longer preach from the pulpit about their opinion on political hmm. choices uh political issues or candidates for instance isn't that right that's right and that's why i take it a step further now cuz i don't let them off the hook no more cuz everything you just said we are, the churches automatically have the first the freedom of Amendment right to speak. That's correct. I mean, what, that's what it's about: petition, religion, and uh, you guys know it better than me. So the fact that they sold out to that contract means that they're they're consciously doing it. So that means they're serving evil. So they're not speaking on all the stuff you guys talk about. So they're literally being. When I say this word, I'm not playing because I've been around pimps and hoes. They literally are being pimped by the evil government, yeah. and they are it's greed. Audience. It's it's absolutely right. greed. You're absolutely right about that because they're told by the supporters of the legal system, these lawyers, for instance, and of course every church that goes through the 501c3 then will also advocate that others go through it um, because the idea is that well, if you're not 501c3, then your uh, you know your attendees cannot take a tax deduction on the donations that they give. This is the line, and also it's a not lie. True. Yeah. It is a lie. You absolutely. I've done the research. If you look up the free church movement you'll you'll see the irs's own code that says that churches do not have to be basically you don't have to be 501c3 you just have to be a church and in order to be a church you just form a church it's just an idea you cre- you can create a church as long as you have one other person uh to to create a church with I mean, you could probably just do it by yourself if uh if you wanted to and so the Some idea states have the, rules on uh, what a church needs to look like inside their state, but that doesn't mm-hmm. mean that doesn't necessarily affect the federal government. Yeah, we're talking rules. about right the feds. Um, so, and I don't know what the individual state rules are, but with the federal government, you can your uh, if you are a non five hundred one c three, if you have no status at all with the federal government in that way, you can still have your uh, attendees to the church take tax deductions. It's totally legal to do that. It's just that the lawyers tell you differently, and these churches believe it. And so they get completely uh, hooked into this system that then starts to control what they're able to say. And that's one of the reasons why we went with the free church model for the Shire Free Church, which folks can learn more about at church.shiresociety.com. So what was issue number two that you were calling about? Before we go to issue number two, can I stop you? I just disagree with one thing. You said they believe it. See, that's where I don't let them off the hook because they know better now. They know exactly what they are uh, agreeing with. See, we can't keep saying yeah, that. They, I see what you're saying. They're doing it anyway because they, be, but they, be, what they probably believe is that it will get them more money, and that may be true because some people, uh, you know, some of the people who attend the church may not feel comfortable if they're not 501c3 because they've heard so many times that you can only get a deduction from a 501c3 donation, and so it may very well be that a church can receive more donations simply because people are misinformed. Um, and, of course, that would be that the church is greedy and they're seeking uh, money over their religious freedom. I'll tell you what, Richard, stand by. We'll get you uh, back with issue number two here in moments. 855 450 free. And, again, if you want to learn more about the Shire Free Church, you can go to church.shiresociety.com. That is the organization that, uh, that brings you Free Talk Live, as well as some other great groups like the Genesis Communications Network and, of course, our wonderful Free Talk Live amplifiers. 855 450 free. You can take control of the airwaves. There's more coming up on Free Talk Live. 
Are you excited about the World Wide Web? Do you want a place where you can share your ideas and express yourself? Well, dial up your modems and stream on down to the GCN Live Community Forum. Lots of radical features await you there. Wow, Internet guy. I am so glad I went to the GCN Live Community Forum. You too can discover why the World Wide Web is awesome. Just go to GCNlive.com slash forum. That's GCNlive.com slash forum. I'll see you in cyberspace. Space. Friend at GCN Live on Diaspora and Cross.tv. Virtually anyone can hack your cell phone and track your calls, your texts, your emails, your every movement, but only if they can detect a signal. Stay one step ahead of hackers and Big Brother with a Block It Pocket, a custom-made pocket infused with pure silver that creates a complete Faraday enclosure for your cell phone. For free shipping to the lower 48, visit BlockItPocket.com or call 888-315-9618, BlockItPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 85% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. If you're a regular reader of FreeKeen.com, you know there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at FreeKeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at FreeKeen.com. That's FreeKeen.com. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Burgridge, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. It's Free Talk Live. Of course, you can bring up anything that happens to be on your mind here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've also, of course, got Skype. Skype username tonight is lrn.fm. And with you in studio, Ian here. Derek J. And Mark. We're going back to Richard in Texas. He did say he had a second thing to talk about besides free churches. Uh, go ahead with item number two, Richard. Yeah, like I was in the military from 83 to 91, and when I got in, I didn't have any idea about what 
arms for hostages was and all that stuff. But then as time went on, I started getting the better picture that we were funding both sides, Iraq and Iran. And at the same time, we were building up the drug wars all over South and Central America. And at the same time, we were growing the Crips and the Bloods and all the other assorted uh, criminal groups to move the drugs. So all I'm saying is a whole lot of people who were in the same position as me 30 years ago know what I know now. But just like the church members, they just want the boots on the ground people in the military and the, the, the people in the church pews. They have knowledge now, but they won't even call out their generals in the military, just like in the people in the church won't call out the clergy in the churches. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying the Tom Dixon carries the everyday people. We won't stand up in numbers and make our bosses do the right thing because we we have a, a spirit of cowardice i believe well do you but really we want, do you really believe that these pastors out there are having a, a crisis of conscience where they really want to call out the military commanders for all the evil they're oh. doing but they can't because their hands are tied i mean really do you think that's the situation they're in no i'm <laughs> no i'm saying just the opposite i think most of the clergy and i know a lot of them because i called a lot of shows i know a lot of them personally I don't think they have any conscience at all. There's a uh, <laughs> a, a, a very popular uh, uh, what do you call it uh, uh, when you do a, a when you check the numbers of the people uh, when you check the what uh, of other people you know when you do a a, a survey oh, of, yeah. of the clergy and a lot of clergy are just straight out atheists. But the only reason why they're in the clergy is because they can make money. It's so good yeah, easy. interesting. I believe I believe that could very well be true. Richard, thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate it. I uh, appreciate hearing from you. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. Mark, let's go back to more on poverty from Raw Story, where they're just now getting to explain to us what it is that we supposedly don't know about how government is the wonderful solution to all things uh, that uh, people are frustrated with. Yes, she's um, Greta, uh, here the, the author at rawstory.com, says, So what does this have to do with fiscal policy? Well, duh. Poverty is perpetuated or alleviated, worsened or improved by fiscal policy. That's not the only thing affecting poverty, poverty, but it's one of the biggest things. To list just a few of the most obvious examples of the very, um, very direct influence, tax policy, minimum wage, funding of public schools and universities, unionization rights, banking and lending laws, labor laws, funding of public transportation, public health care, unemployment benefits, disability benefits, welfare policy, public assistance that doesn't penalize people for having savings, child care, having a functioning infrastructure. Wait a minute. I think the government does all these things already, so why isn't poverty solved? <laughs> she's saying it needs more oh, funding. more of it. Okay, She hasn't great. actually said that. Well, that's what she's, she's insinuating she's, so far. Maybe yeah, she it's does the implication. It's the heavy implication. Having economic policies that support labor, having a uh, tax system that doesn't steal from the poor to give to the rich. Wait, 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 wait. So she's okay with stealing from the rich to give to the poor because right now taxes steal from everybody. Uh, and I and give imagine, to government bureaucrats. Yeah. And uh, I, I do want to hear more about what she has to say here, but you know, the, the presumption is pretty clear that somehow government alleviates these problems when I think we've already shown that it makes it worse. So she's right that government can't alleviate or make these problems worse. It's just that we think that when the government gets out of things, that, uh, that you know, when they get out of regulating industries and things like that, that that helps people get out of poverty. She, of course, would believe the opposite is the case, that you have to give them handouts. Yeah, add a middleman. That sounds like a great idea. Having a social safety net, a real social safety net, not right. one that just barely keeps people from starving to Meaning death. Meaning more funding. But one that actually lets people get on their feet and function, makes a difference. Mm. When these systems are working- You can't get on working, your feet if you're trapped in a damn net. Right. Well, these systems have been around for decades, Greta. Yeah. When are they going to start working? As soon as you elect more Democrats. <laughs> we have all the Democrats you need in New York <laughs> and New Jersey and Connecticut right. and California. And poor we people know are... what democratic policy looks right. like. And poor people are still poor. What do you know? They, it, there's a lot more poor people in the Democratic areas. and they. Yeah, how's know? Detroit doing? Right. They're it's pretty awful. They're pretty Democrat. Democrats have no answers for poverty or the Democratic areas wouldn't be full of poor people. I I'm know the claiming... answer to poverty. Get a job with the government. Yep, that's, uh, <laughs> that'll help. That'll help. That's no doubt about that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's see. Uh, then they're, when they're not, it's difficult to impossible uh, to get out of poverty. 
I haven't even even gotten to the fiscal policy of the so, uh, so-called free trade and all the ways it feeds poverty in both the U.S. and around the world. I'll get to that in a bit. Fiscal policy oh affects yeah, poverty. So free trade isn't free, but the uh, free services the, the government gives out, those are free. Yes. Um, in, in the United States, fiscally conservative means supporting fiscal policies that perpetuate poverty. Fiscally conservative means slashing support systems that help the poor. No, what fiscally conservative means is getting the government out of uh, out of the poverty funding business and turning it over to charities. This will get people yeah. out of the system that do not need to be in the system. This will take away the incentives to hang around on the social safety net as though it's a hammock. And it'll bring competition into the charitable marketplace. More of it. Because once the government steps away, the charities that take their place will be competing for funds, but competing for donors, which means they have to be lean. They have to be efficient. They have to be spending money wisely. They have to be looking in, at where they're actually giving their donors money to instead of just blindly taking anybody that fills out a form. You know, if you want to know what uh, poor people that understand what it takes to get out of poverty look like, just look at people that are moving here to the United States, some legally, some illegally, in order to make a better life for themselves. Yeah, for yeah. sure. These people have not had training. They haven't been given government programs on how to get a job and how to keep a job and how to do all these other stuff. They understand that hard work is what's going to make their lives better. Just as immigrants have understand understood that, that have been moving to the United States for decades, for generations. That's what's made the United States. This isn't difficult stuff to understand. It isn't that, I can't figure out how to get out of poverty. Yeah. I mean, I was in the lowest socioeconomic class in America. Convict. I made no money Felon. for years. Yeah, Felon prison. convict. Well, I mean, how many? There aren't that many misdemeanor convicts. Um, Wait, you're not a convict if you go to jail? Okay. Um, I, I, okay. You've Fine. been convicted. Yes, I, I suppose you can use you can get under the greater umbrella, but I, <laughs> if you if that's what you wish to do, but I was Mark's in, a badder uh, convict than the rest of us, Derek. I, I spent eight and a half years yeah, in prison. That's two true. months. No, that's, I think that's you true. Line no, up all they your made activists. made the distinction I, when I was in jail. <laughs> as opposed to inmate yeah, versus convict. Yeah, yeah, there were convicts who made that distinction. That's it's, it's a true. real it's a real thing. So, um, yeah, anyway, I, I, the one can't claim, yeah, I had a few little benefits. My mother was still around and all that stuff. I had a place to live, mm -hmm. but I went and got jobs. I worked. I know plenty of guys who got out, did fine for themselves, and I know plenty of guys who were like, eh, I'm going to see see what uh, the next day brings, mm -hmm. and they didn't have such great stuff. I feel like I understand poverty to some extent. Yeah, it's got to be difficult if you have a kid. Here's an idea. Don't have a kid if you're making yeah. if you if you can't handle a four hundred dollar financial emergency. I'm with you. All right, she's gonna go on here, huh? Yep. We're still on number one. I think we need to describe libertarian, uh, you know, responses to what this lady said. Haven't we been doing that the entire time? What do we miss? Uh, I, I just look. the The fact is, is that the state has had control of these things for decades. Sure. And the state's gonna continue to mess them up. The, if you give the state more money, you're just gonna have more poverty. The Every war time on poverty is the same as the war on drugs. You, you know, if you have this government war on something, surprise, you get more of it. The because government only perpetuates what you, what it funds. People respond to incentives, and force doesn't work. Force creates unintended consequences. So right. I get that she wants to help people. So do I. She says I don't understand. She doesn't even understand what we mean. Yeah, that's true. There's more coming up. Eight fifty five, four fifty free. This is Free Talk Live. Attention, business owners. Do you know the three most critical letters in business? CEO. MBA. Nope. Here's a hint. These three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. ROI? The answer is INC, as in incorporation. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why Incorporate.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-941-1029 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from Incorporate.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Get the three little letters that can mean the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. For your free guide, call 1-800-941-1029. That's 1-800-941-1029. 
Would you like to use your IRA funds to buy precious metals and hold them at home? Are you wary of the stock market, paper gold, or faraway depositories? With a checkbook IRA, you may legally take custody of IRA-owned gold and silver. Visit CheckbookIRA.com and learn how IRA owners in all 50 states have already taken control. CheckbookIRA.com. CheckbookIRA.com. We, we, we are a survival company. We manufacture our own line of level 3 and level 3A body armor. We proudly make our armor 100% in America. We have the best prices in the nation, about $125 cheaper than our nearest competitor. All lab certified, for thou art my rock and my fortress. Psalm 31.3. We are Fortress Survival LLC. Dot, dot, dot com. My name is Angel Rach. I'm a mother of two teenage children, and I fought all the way to the Supreme Court for the right to use the medicine that saved my life. I've been permanently disabled for 10 years with an inoperable brain tumor, wasting syndrome, and several other serious conditions. For four years, I was in a wheelchair in so much pain, I couldn't even hug my kids. The hardest part was looking in their eyes and seeing how much they were suffering because of my medical condition. The medicine that gave me my life back and gave my kids their mom back was cannabis, also known as medical marijuana. With medical marijuana, I can walk, maintain my weight, and I can be a mom. Without it, my doctors believe that I would die. To learn more about medical marijuana, contact Marijuana Policy Project at 1-877-JOIN-MPP or on the web at mpp.org. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.LRN.FM or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.LRN.FM. That's apps.LRN.FM. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We're going to continue with more of the uninformed piece from Raw Story about supposedly things libertarians don't understand, but I'm pretty sure we've understood everything she said uh, thus far in this piece. I'm pretty sure they're old complaints, and uh, they've been addressed many, many times. Well, and- it's, but it's going to keep happening, and that's okay. You know, th- I think it's a good thing that, now that, of course, they're not using the word libertarians. They're, they're using fiscal conservative social liberals, which is sort of another way to say libertarian, but, of course, as we've discussed before, uh, my opinion about the word libertarian is that it has to have more principle behind it, as in non-aggression. That is, that as a libertarian, you don't believe in achieving political goals, in this case, helping the poor, through the use of aggression, through the use of aggressive force. And what I mean by that is the tax system is aggressive force. It's backed by the violence of the state in that if you don't pay, they're going to put you in a prison cell. She doesn't address that at one point. Of course in not. And in an article where she says, what, um, here are seven things that, uh, that people that are fiscally conservative and socially liberal don't understand. She refuses to point out, if she understands it all, refuses to point out you know, the, the, the inherent violence in the system. 
most she probably doesn't want to acknowledge that like a lot of people refuse to acknowledge it both on the left and the right you know you don't want they don't want to see the gun in the room she sees the system as the mechanism in her mind as the best mechanism for helping poor people she wants to help people i don't blame her for that the things she said about being poor are relatively correct in this story that it's tough to be poor and you know it's expensive to be poor and so on and so forth but the things she doesn't understand are that it's actually these very government programs that she supports in a lot of ways that keep people poor. And many of the government regulations that she likely supports supposedly to put it, stick it to those big corporations actually help the big corporations, protecting them from poor people rising up and creating their own innovative businesses in the marketplace. It sounds like this author, Gretchen, sort of reasons— Greta. Excuse me, Greta. Uh, sort of reasons from uh, appeal to consequences, like, oh, well, the government's this machine, and if you tweak it this way, this will happen, yeah. and if you tweak it this way, that'll happen, and so that's why she sort of frames this as social liberal, fiscal conservative. This is the output that will come from that machine. Whereas you're saying, like, no, if you start, y yeah, you can get those results, but if you start from a principle of non-aggression, uh, those things sort of. Um, Develop, and it would develop and blossom in a uh, in a better way because they'd be uh, the money would be more accurately spent. Each individual would be able to decide where to send their money, and so the marketplace would provide better, more effective services. But they, those people don't believe that about the market. They believe that no. they believe it, it's inherently inefficient. Yeah. Not only are you getting better consequences, you're just not appealing to the consequences that you get. You're appealing to the principles that they that they stem from mm -hmm. in the first place. So which I think she doesn't see. One thing you can, like, if you believe that uh, the human race simply isn't going to do the things you want them to do, then the government is more efficient. So, for, for instance, if you want to and see— And that's what they believe. Th they're they believe right. They'll, they'll not contribute. They believe people are inherently selfish, and so therefore they won't help their neighbors, which, of course, really all the evidence is to the contrary. If you're really concerned about getting to Mars, that the human beings get to Mars in the next decade, you're right that— Freeing the marketplace is not going to get humans to Mars in the next decade. I would agree that uh, just being, you know, freeing up the marketplace isn't going to get us to Mars in the next decade. However, but you don't really know that. I don't really you know that, but I would. It's a prediction. Um, I mean, look at what the SpaceX people have done for what was what was the first prize, like ten thousand dollars or something ridiculous like that to put something into low Earth orbit. Wasn't it just a fairly small cash prize? I don't remember the exact number, but am I right about this? It, it was something like that. Yeah, and, but uh, and it got done fast because. Bragging rights were yeah. the, and then opportunities that come from being the winner in that prize. And so why couldn't that escalate in over a period of ten years and and you know technology shoot up with sure. you know fresh competition? It in that could, market. but it have to be a very very free market, and I'm yeah. not entirely, and I don't think we're going to get that in ten years either. Maybe not. Um, Who knows? But what I can tell you is is that when the United States put a bunch of money into going to the moon, they got there, and if the United States put a bunch of money into going to Mars, they'd get there. Now there would maybe, be. What if they not. put a bunch of money in the war on drugs? They would fail. But at that point, there you're are going, some who say they didn't go to the moon, Mark. Yeah, those people are <laughs> probably wrong. Oh no. Um, <laughs> so all I'm saying, though, Ian, is is that you can use the government to get what you want. If you say Sometimes. you can't, you you're just blinding yourself. You can get what you want in the war on drugs. You can get it if you spend enough money no, in the you government. Can't. Yes, you can. No, you can I can go not. around shooting every person that has a has a joint in their mouth. Bam, uh, you're dead. Uh, Pretty soon you'll win the war on drugs. You're not going to find everybody with a joint in their mouth by Just, uh, going around shooting people. Ian. No one's going to walk by you with a joint if, if they know they're going to get shot. An, if you put enough force and enough money behind something, you no, will win. I don't think so. You but, can't defeat the you can't defeat drug use and drug dealing. Can't, I sort can't of think like there was a time when you were right, Mark, that might made uh everything possible, but I'd like to believe, and I do believe now, that technology has made it possible to outsmart the, shut brute down the internet. force of. <laughs> I mean, look, I'm just saying that if you're if, if you're going to be tyrannical enough, if you shut you can down get the internet. I'm going to smoke more pot. <laughs> you, <laughs> Ian, you won't be able to smoke pot. You're the if 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 this is somebody's goal, you're the first person they shoot, right? Uh -huh. You're one of the most famous. There's millions of people in pot America. smokers in America. <laughs> There's millions of people in America who smoke cannabis, and if they know they're going to get shot for it, they're just not going to do it openly in public. Okay, I, it's not it's not going to you're not going to end the war on drugs. You're not going to destroy drug use if you get even more violent. And there are already countries in the world where drug dealers are given the death penalty. And there's a impossible? lot fewer drugs there, Ian. 
How do you know that? A lot fewer. I don't know. Because they're not shooting that many people for drugs. That's mm -hmm. why. Well, have you looked at the statistics from those countries? The best I can tell. Yeah, have you actually looked at them? Yes, I I've spent some time looking okay. at uh, the numbers from Saudi Arabia. Mm. I mean, you know, you go through there with a little bit of pot and you're in big trouble. People are pretty careful about it there. Okay. So there you go. All That's all I'm saying is, is that you put enough time and energy, but enough money, enough government push in something, you just get much better results with a free market. You'll get a, a, an expansion, an ec economic expansion in lots of areas, in lots of ways if you make a free market. You're going to get the expansion you want in one area at a tremendous cost by using the government. And that's what this lady wants. This lady cares about poor people a lot. And... She thinks that she can solve the problem with government programs. We've tried them for decades. They haven't worked. Kay. What are we going to do? Going on with number two? Uh, I thought we were, was you're finally done with number one here? Yes. Okay, great. No, I do not want to go on for uh, with number two. We will have to do that another day. You did tell me, though, off the air that this article is mostly number one. It is. Uh, so we'll get to the other ones later because I know we can just keep you know, discussing these, and there are other issues worth talking about here tonight. Uh, I think we should jump into the Cheshire Fair. We'll, we'll follow up with uh, the $70,000 minimum wage thing here in a little bit, since that does tie into this poverty discussion. But I don't want to have Derek J. leave tonight and have not have talked about uh, the Cheshire Fair, which is where we spent, you and I, uh, and several other activists, the last five days, five full working days. Uh, you and I, Derek J., were opening up at the Cheshire Fairgrounds. It was the fourth year that I've put together an outreach booth at said fair. And I'm sort of an old hat at doing this fair outreach. I did it back in the like the year 2000 and 2003 and 2006, like for five years in Florida and have done it for several years up here. Uh, the purpose of the outreach booth this year was to do Bitcoin outreach, and it was the same purpose last year. We actually did much better this year than we did last year. We handed out hundreds of Bitcoin flyers, which we did that last year as well. But also this year, we managed to get 18 people to install Bitcoin wallets and compared to three people last year, which I thought was incredibly successful. I didn't know what to expect uh, this time around. I wasn't sure if we were going to see more response on people installing a Bitcoin wallet on their smartphone or not, but it was significantly more you know, six times more, and that was awesome. So you and I, Derek, got to have the great experience of talking with people about Bitcoin. Were there any uh, highlights of, of that that you uh, that you wanted to share? Yeah, um, people were surprised at how fast and easy it was, the fact that there was no um, private information that they needed to put in. And this was fun for me, like, every time. I, I got to talk to someone new and share with them uh, about a wallet and I joked with one woman that if I'm successful, I lose money because I was actually sending them some Bitcoin. You and I were both started. doing that. Yeah, it's one of the things I changed this year, and you inspired me to do it differently. Last year, I would go and put money in the machine, which didn't always work perfectly, and it mm -hmm. just made it was made it made it easier to just send them money from our phones. Yeah, so that's what we did. So, like one of the things about imagine trying to explain email to somebody who had never used email before, yeah. and yeah, it's Explaining a lot like Bitcoin that. is is a lot like that, and the best way to show someone, well, the best way to explain it is to, to show, show someone. Them. Yeah, so you know, if if I needed to set up an email account uh, with on somebody's phone real quick, I'm sure everyone would know how to do that, or they would be able to figure it out real quick. Well, Bitcoin's very much the same way. They just go into their app store, download a free wallet, and they've got everything they need to send and receive Bitcoin around the world. So I showed them that, and it was very simple and. Uh, freeing for people. Yeah, it's, it was great. We'll talk more about some of the experiences, including some of the negative sides of being at the fair, yeah. uh, some of which you can see over at freekeen.com right now in a video, Derek, Derek J., that you posted, I believe it was yesterday or the day before that. More coming up. It's Free Talk Live. Shaquille O'Neal for Icy Hot. If you've got pain, you need the patch. The Icy Hot Patch. Powerful, targeted, fast-acting pain relief that stays put without the mess. Icy to dull the pain, hot to relax it away in a variety of sizes from back, shoulders, knees, even arthritis. So you're covered whenever and wherever you hurt. Stop pain right at the source with Icy Hot Patches. Pain's no match for the Icy Hot Patch. For temporary topical pain relief, use only as directed. Every summer we go to Canyon Woods. Love getting outside. Love the hiking. 
paint, the itching and irritation from poison ivy, bug bites, all the things that keep me inside. So I need something strong. Cortisone 10 Intensive Healing is clinically proven with the strongest non-prescription itch medicine available for fast, long-lasting relief of itching and irritation with seven moisturizers to help heal skin. I finally have the relief I need. Hey, Jan, check this out. On my way. Cortisone 10. Feel the heal. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, August 3rd, 2015. Silver is trading at $14.72 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,092 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $286. Antiwar.com reports with Kurdish warplanes continuing to pound their site in northern Iraq, the Kurdistan Workers' Party, PKK, has launched multiple attacks against the Turkish military yesterday, killing three and wounding dozens of others, some of them seriously. The larger attack was a suicide bombing by PKK militants driving a tractor full of explosives who attacked a military outpost near the border with Iran. The blast killed two Turkish soldiers and wounded 31 others. The toll is expected to rise as at least four are in grave condition. Another attack overnight targeted a patrol just south of the Mardin province, killing a soldier and wounding seven others. This brings the number of Turkish security forces killed by the PKK since the fighting began two weeks ago to 16. Turkey and the PKK entered a ceasefire in 2012 and started negotiations on a settlement of their multi-decade war. This round of efforts appeared to be over, at least for now, as Turkish officials talk up more attacks and the PKK suggest Turkey can can no longer be trusted. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports a massive wildfire that has flamed nearly 50,000 acres in Northern California's dehydrated wine country continues to worry officials who have barely been able to get a handle on the blaze after four days of trying. The Rocky Fire in the Napa Valley has destroyed at least 50 structures so far and is threatening 6,300 more, according to officials. The blaze is so far 5% contained, the same containment figures firefighters reported Friday evening. Winds and dry vegetation in the drought-stricken region have only served to fuel the flames, which officials said nearly doubled in size between Saturday and Sunday. The Rocky Fire is burning in Lake, Yolo, and Calusa counties, which lie in the northeast of the San Francisco metropolitan area. The Napa Blaze is one of nearly two dozen wildfires burning across the state of California on Sunday. On Thursday, a South Dakota firefighter died while assisting the U.S. Forest Service in fighting the Frog Fire near Aden in Modoc County. California has been mired in a severe drought since 2011, which has upped the wildfire risk considerably. Governor Jerry Brown on Friday declared a state of emergency. So far, 24 homes and 26 outbuildings have been destroyed by the fire and numerous communities have been evacuated. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. FANS are friends, allies, and numerous supporters. 
fans help FPP afford to produce more original content. You can join the fans program for as little as $3 per month or any amount of Bitcoin per month thanks to the recurring payment options provided by Coinbase. To learn more or to join the fans program, visit fans.fppradio.com. Reuters reports NAACP leaders launched a 40-day march across the U.S. South on Saturday with the rally in Selma, Alabama, drawing on the city's significance in the 1960s civil rights movement to call attention to the issue of racial injustice in modern America. Organizers of America's Journey for Justice want to build momentum behind a renewed national dialogue over race relations prompted by the killing of a number of unarmed men by police officers over the past year. NAACP leaders at the rally urged marchers to honor the memories of New York's Eric Garner and Cincinnati's Sam DuBose, two of the unarmed men killed in police confrontations. The march, which would cover nearly 900 miles, began on Selma's historic Edmund Pettus Bridge, where police beat peaceful marchers with clubs and doused them with tear gas in 1965. That infamous confrontation was a catalyst for the passage of the landmark Voting Rights Act, signed into law 50 years ago this week. The march will feature teach-ins and other events in five states as it makes its way to the nation's capital, where organizers hope to draw thousands at a final rally on September 16th. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. U.S. officials assure Hong Kong that their protest is just one of many issues the White House is staying silent on, and an old guy at a hostel is down to party. This is The Onion Week in Review. Stunned officials from the Marine Conservation Institute announced this week that the past half century of climate change and habitat loss somehow hasn't managed to take down the government parrotfish. Biologists stress that despite destructive chemical runoff, rising ocean temperatures, and overfishing, the persistent little shits were somehow plugging right along like nothing had even happened. You look at the oil spills, greenhouse gases, and God knows what else we're throwing at them, and you think, yeah, those subtropical f**ks should have been wiped out decades ago. But nope, these sons of bitches are still around and doing better than ever. In other news, a grasshopper is dismembered by a future Supreme Court justice. A man having a great time will soon have to apologize to everyone and Rand Paul pretends to be asleep so his dad will carry him in from the car this is the Onion News Network Free Talk Live this is Free Talk Live you can bring up anything that you want. We're launching into the third hour of the program. We've been talking a lot about the government keeping poor people poor. You can go back and listen to the last two hours at your leisure over on our website, freetalklive.com. Of course, we have live streams 24 hours a day whenever the show, the live show is over on our live streams, the Free Talk Live 24-7 streams. The live show then reruns for 21 hours until our next live show. So you can listen that way. You can also listen via download. Uh, as well, podcast or direct download through freetalklive.com. And with you in the studio tonight, you've got Ian. Derek J. And Mark. Derek, you and I spent a lot of time, something like, I don't know, 40 hours. Yeah. Uh, over the last week at the county fair. Chris Cantwell was out there with us. Uh, Daryl and some of the other uh, activists in the area came out and helped. Mm-hmm. But you, uh, Chris and myself, we were there all five days all day long. It was so much fun. And it was your I first time. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Yeah, I missed it last year, and I, I was so upset when everyone came back and talked about all the fun they had. Yeah. And I love Bitcoin, so I want to talk to the community about Bitcoin, and I had and a blast. Boy, did you. Yeah. We, we handed out hundreds of Bitcoin flyers, which, you know, there really aren't too many Bitcoin flyers out there. You were remarking about this when you right. visited San Francisco recently, like this supposed Bitcoin mecca. They didn't even have a single handout uh, to give to people. Well, I talk about Bitcoin everywhere I go. And so when I went to San Francisco, everywhere I ate and spent money, I was like, hey, if you heard of Bitcoin, do you take Bitcoin? Mm-hmm. And then I wanted to give them something like, oh, well, you haven't heard about it? Here you go. Here you can get set up when I walk away from you. But no, once I walk away, that's out of their mind you know so these flyers are very valuable i think even if people don't get a full grasp of what bitcoin is right in that 30 second conversation okay they could read about it later exactly i you know there's a you have to strike a balance when you're doing these outreach booths between uh giving somebody the full picture 
and just getting information into people's hands. And so for everybody that you spend time giving them the full picture, if there's no one else out there handing out flyers to the other people who are walking by, you're missing opportunities. So I'm not saying it's a bad thing to talk to somebody. We did that, each of us, because we had multiple people there. Uh, you know, when you were having a chat with somebody, give it, getting in depth and explaining Bitcoin to somebody who was interested enough to stand there and listen, Chris or myself would have been out there also handing out flyers to the people walking by. So we had it covered. But if you were there by yourself, for instance, it can be, you know, even more of a challenge because on one hand, you do want to talk to people. On the other hand, you also want to reach more people. So it's a it's kind of a, a trade off. And we did a good job of, I think, doing all of it. We re reached hundreds of people throughout the, the five days with flyers. Even uh, you know a smaller amount of people installed Bitcoin wallets. And by the way, uh, let's make our recommendations on the air for Bitcoin wallets. We we part of this process of being at the fair gave us the excuse to actually really kind of take a close look at some of the wallets mm -hmm. software that's out there and assess you know what's the best wallet for Android, what's the best wallet for iPhone users? Because for those people who did want to get the wallets, you know, we had to make a recommendation. Well, best is going to mean something different for each user, but for new users who want it quickly, right. uh, we have good, some good recommendations. Well, but I also mean best as in it's not crashing, it's not broken when you open it. Uh, that, I think, is what I'm, what I'm qualifying by best, okay. something that's actually usable. And certainly there is a best for a new user, and then there's other ones that maybe more advanced users can use. But I would say, and, and you you and I used to recommend this Airbits wallet, and we're told that they're working on it and that it's going to be getting better. The last time I tried Airbits, it just would not show the directory, which was the coolest feature about Airbits for me, was that it would show a directory of nearby businesses based on uh, your location as to what businesses actually accept Bitcoin. And for those that don't know, Bitcoin is an amazing uh, you know, digital currency not issued by any government or any bank or corporation that is sort of taking the world by storm to some extent. And uh, you can learn more at weusecoins.com. Uh, but to, you know, to get this information out was, was really important. And so we were recommending specific programs. You had found one called Bread Wallet yeah. for the iPhone only, I think, at this Correct. point. Correct, yes. What did you like about the Bread Wallet? That it's so simple and clean and nice. Uh, the fact that um, you download it, it's a small program. Uh, once you open it up, it prompts you with, hey, do you want to set up some, secure, some security features? You can do that now, or you can do that later. And mm -hmm. you can just skip through that process and get right up to a QR code, which is how you send and receive Bitcoin. So... This was the best wallet that I was recommending for people with iPhones because it took literally about 30 seconds for them to get it and receive some Bitcoin. And that's what we wanted. That's pretty fast. Right. That's yeah. what we wanted for this booth. And I mean, uh, imagine a merchant out there who's like, hey, I take credit cards. I uh, am hit with three or five percent fees. And then in 30 seconds for no cost, they yeah. can start accepting Bitcoin. Great point. Especially if you've ever actually gone through the process of starting to accept credit cards. That is a ridiculously invasive Forget process that takes forever. We've done it here on Free Talk Live oh, because yeah. we'll take credit cards for uh, the AMP program. And you got to sign up with a merchant provider and the gateway account, and you got to get the right merchant provider and the gateway accounts that work together. And you probably got to link it all with bank accounts, too, yeah, so you've yeah. got to have bank account right. info, and you, you, you got to have approved. passports or whatever for that. Yep. And then they have to approve it, and then you got to implement it, and there's got to be this and that. There's all kinds of requirements. People couldn't believe it yeah. that it was that simple. They were like, that's it? That was always the most common right. reaction. That's it? There's yeah. nothing else to do? It took longest to download the program. That's right. what takes the longest about starting a Bitcoin wallet is however long it takes to actually download the software to your phone. Uh, and then, you know, when you run it, boom, there you are. You're good to go. Yeah. No application whatsoever. So the other great thing about Bread Wallet uh, that I think separates it from some of the others is that you can still back up your wallet. You can still save it yeah, uh, when you want to. So if you drop your phone in a lake or leave it in a cab, then you can still recover those bitcoins. Yep. If you set up the um, the passcode and all that. So I'm hoping that we'll see that for, uh, for the Android at some point because it did seem like it was, was a pretty good wallet. Um, there's also, for iPhone, we were told that the Apple version of blockchain, the iPhone version of blockchain.info's wallet, is a good version of yeah. that wallet. Yep. Uh, but the Android one is still broken. It really? has been more than a year now. It's since not it, always broken, but it is unreliable. It's it super always, unreliable. It doesn't always display the balance correctly, which is a major issue. No, and, and But it's worse than what you're saying, though, because what happens with blockchain, besides crashing, it crashes, too. Yeah. Uh, but when it's, when it's showing this 
incorrect balance, what you're saying. It's showing the Bitcoin balance correctly. Yes. But it's showing the U.S. dollar balance incorrectly. In this case, it was negative nine cents at one point when Derek opened up his blockchain uh, wallet. And that really screws things up because when you go to pay for something with the blockchain wallet, there's a conversion that goes on, right? These The nice thing about Bitcoin wallets is they all will convert right there instantly in the program. Well, how much Bitcoin is $10? Okay, so if somebody wanted to buy the Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree DVD, those are ten dollars. You need to know how much Bitcoin is a ten dollars worth. Otherwise, of you got to get out a calculator and figure it out. Yeah, uh, and or so, we could label the DVDs in Bitcoin, but that's but uh, that price is constantly changing, sure. so that wouldn't make any sense. So you need to have that ability to convert. Well, if the program that you're using, in this case the blockchain Android app, thinks that the pro <laughs> that the the uh, the U.S. dollar value in your account is negative nine cents, that's going to really screw screw things up when you try to calculate what $10 worth of Bitcoin is. It just doesn't even work. You cannot do Bitcoin in that circumstance. So I'm sorry, blockchain. I don't know what the hell's wrong with your program for Android, but it has been like this for more than a year. And it's just embarrassing uh, when that ha when you open up this program. So I, don't, I won't use it anymore. I'll use blockchain on the internet through a web browser. Yeah, I like Their it there. web application great. is Awesome. So I don't want to. I don't want to downplay that there are. You know, they're not offering good services. I use the app and haven't had that much trouble with it. But well, you know. lucky you. Maybe you're not using it very often. And I occasionally, when I use it, it works perfectly. Yeah. So it just ain't worth it's, it. It's, it's not reliable though. If you if you are trying to go and buy something from a Bitcoin vendor and you can't even get your wallet to open, that's you know you're wasting somebody's time there at that point. If there's somebody if you're standing in a line, there's people behind you. That's super embarrassing. Yeah, that's not fast and it's not a good way to sell a new technology. So what we found was for Android users, something that's, uh, I didn't even know about it before. I'd always seen it and I was like, oh, it's called Bitcoin Wallet. That's creative. And I never really even took a serious look at it, but you downloaded this. Mm -hmm. It's Derek. the top search result in the Google Play Store when you right. search Bitcoin. And, uh, and it's just called Bitcoin Wallet by Bitcoin Wallet developers. They claim that their wallet is actually like the original wallet and that it's used by blockchain or whatever. It's used by these other companies. It's great. As a like a base to build their wallets off of. And one of the coolest things about this Bitcoin wallet is that whenever people receive Bitcoin with it, it's got this ching kind of like cash register nice. sound to it uh, or like change jingling kind of sound. And it's really attractive. More coming up. Free Talk Live. This is a life-changing message for anyone with sleep apnea who is on the go and tired of dragging around a big, bulky home CPAP device. MiniCPAP.com now offers a portable device that's as small as a soda can and weighs less than a pound. For even more freedom, you can add a battery that's as tiny as a deck of cards. It's called the Transcend Mini CPAP. And right now, you can try it risk-free for 21 days by calling 1-800-939-8536. Transcend is the world's first portable mini CPAP device. It gives you the freedom to sleep in total comfort anywhere you are. Our smallest and most advanced portable design ever. Transcend is so small and so light you can fit it in your briefcase or purse to use anywhere you go. It's FAA compliant too, so you can even sleep comfortably while flying. Enjoy the freedom to sleep comfortably anywhere. Call MiniCPAP.com now for your 21-day in-home trial. 1-800-939-8536. That's 1-800-939-8536. As if chlorine in our water weren't bad enough, now they're adding ammonia? It's true. Some municipalities are now adding ammonia plus chlorine to your water supply. It's a disinfectant called chloramine. But with a trusted Big Berkey water filter, you can keep chloramine out of your water. New NSF EPA certified lab tests show EPA Berkey water filters remove chloramines, pharmaceuticals, BPA, pesticides, bacteria and viruses, all forms of fluoride, and much more. Big Berkey water filters are the original and most trusted on the market. The gold standard in water purification. And our filters last for years at less than two cents per gallon. Big Berkey, the one that's powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. Get your Big Berkey today. Call 1-877-99-BERKEY or click BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. That's 1-877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey Water Filters, for the love of clean water. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. 
I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink. Providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. We're inviting you to join us on the radio waves at 855-450-FREE. 855-450-3733. We know a thing or two about Bitcoin on Free Talk Live, but maybe not as much as Bitcoinist. Yeah, Bitcoinist.net is the ultimate resource for Bitcoin industry news, reviews, education, and the latest on cryptocurrency, um, cryptocurrency's ecosystem. Bitcoinist is the prime online destination for information about the Bitcoin and digital currency industry. Their website integrates a community forum, breaking Bitcoin and digital currency news. They also aim to cover fintech and blockchain tech um, news as well. Bitcoinist has a very sophisticated Bitcoin um, network statistics, a solid beginner's guide to Bitcoin, and much more. The Bitcoinist platform serves the needs of everyone looking to keep up with Bitcoin and digital currencies, from beginners to experts. Bitcoinist.net. So we had an amazing uh, Bitcoin outreach booth happening here in Cheshire County, New Hampshire, which arguably is not the most technologically savvy place in the world. I mean, we were... Oh my goodness, no. Yeah, we were out in the middle of the woods, right? Like, we're, we're in Keene, New Hampshire, which is a, a little city of 25,000 people. It barely even qualifies as a city uh, here in the southwestern corner of New Hampshire, which is... Otherwise, all rural. It's all woods. Just as soon as you go five minutes outside of Keene, and so you know that's a cha- that's what a county fair is, though. I mean, the county fair is the place where the the rural folk come to go and go, go on rides and look at horses and yeah, cows. get yourself a little rural on, right? I yeah. mean, that's exactly what it is. Even when in Sarasota, where we would where we're both from originally, it's certainly a plenty of a very urban place. Sarasota, Roberts very hip, Ar- very uh, gay friendly, and that kind of thing. Roberts Arena there down t- um, is isn't exactly downtown, but it's pretty close to downtown. Yeah, and uh, they'd have the hogs and the uh, the horses and the sheep and that's everything within city right limits. There. Roberts Arena is definitely within the Sarasota city yep. limits. By the way, people in uh, Sarasota screaming at their um, uh, their radios. Robarts. Robarts. It's not Robarts. It's not Robarts? No, it's Roberts. I always pronounced it Robarts. <laughs> Sorry, the, old, the, old, the, the older folks in town pronounce it Roberts. Gotcha. So anyway, uh, that's just what people go there to do. They go to look at cows and ride rides or whatever. And that stuff doesn't really attract me very much. But that's where people are. And at a county fair, you're going to have, you know, even at a smaller county fair, and this is a smallish county fair, you're still going to get 30,000 to, you know, maybe 50,000 people walking through there 
on a good, you know, full week of, of a fair. Mm-hmm. And uh, so wherever there's people, there are going to be people who are willing to stop and talk about whatever it is we're pitching. Prior to Bitcoin, we had done uh, the Shire Society Declaration as our pitch. So we were pitching to people walking by like, hey, you want to declare your personal independence? And I think uh, the second year of doing that, we ended up with like 226 people signing the Shire Society wow. Declaration over the five days at the fair. So that was really great because more people would be you know, the, the not so technologically inclined people can read a declaration and sign it. Like, so there was more of a potential for someone to say yes and, and come over and talk. It doesn't require a smartphone or yeah. Wi Fi or five minutes or whatever. Or caring about the internet. And what one of the more oh, com- man. common responses that we got from people passing by was internet? Huh? <laughs> and, you know, like. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm exaggerating only slightly there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there were a lot of people who were basically said, yeah, I don't have Internet. I don't have a phone and I don't have it at home. And there were a lot of people who Do responded Do you think that's that an way. excuse half the time? No. No. I believe these it. People I mean, these said, are people where I don't have a computer and yeah. they looked pretty proud of it. Yeah, they're yeah, like I camo do, wearing kind of backwoods. I folks. do business with pig farmers, man, and I, they've all got internet. They've all got smartphones. Well, maybe they're too busy on the internet to go to the fair. I, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that was one of the more common responses. So if there's somebody out there laughing at our res- our results, oh, you only got 18 wallet installs. Well, I would like to challenge everybody listening to go ahead and put together their own Bitcoin outreach booth. I want someone put to together do this any better. kind of outreach booth. <laughs> I want someone to do this better than we did it in uh, Cheshire County, New Hampshire. It's a shame that no one else does anything like this across all of New Hampshire because there's certainly plenty of activists, although I guess it does cost money to put a booth on. It was like 400 bucks for five days. That's not that much money, uh, all things considered. It's a big commitment in time. You put a big it's commitment a big in time. Time commitment, that's certainly true. But there are supposedly, you know, 1,500 activists in New Hampshire. Surely someone else can put together a booth. So, I mean, if you think 18 is kind of bad, well, I wish someone could do it better. Please call up, let us know how your Bitcoin outreach booth goes. And please feel free to use some of our ideas, some of the, the techniques and the suggestions that we're making here. I wanted to talk about this on the radio because we had some interesting experiences, but also to encourage other people to emulate this. This is something anyone can do with a relatively small amount of money. I mean, what does our booth look like? It's a, one of those pop-up 10 by 10 or 12 by 12 tents. Uh, it's got a you know got a peace flag hanging there, the LRN banner, the Shire Society banner, and there's an eight-foot table. And then on the table, we've got our Bitcoin propaganda. We happen to have a Bitcoin vending machine, but that's more of a prop than anything else. It's hardly used. I think that was only used it twice. Was, it was used to be pointed to more, right. more than anything. A lot of people would ask, well, where do you get it? It's like, you know, online exchanges, anywhere you would get money. But right. you could also use a vending machine like that. And they would say, oh, OK. So exactly. you could see it. So there was that. And then just, you know, some other liberty-oriented flyers that we had there to sort of populate the table, Daryl's Daryl's newspaper, etc. So it's not a complicated thing. That was a hit with folks who didn't have internet. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. The people who don't have internet, you could go, how'd you like a newspaper? And their eyes will light up. Like, oh my, I like newspapers. (laughs) You know? I get that. Tweety needs a little to change in underneath. (laughs) So, um, yeah, so please uh, feel free to emulate this. This is, emu- you know, easy it was to fun. copy. It was fun. So, you know, I think you'll have fun doing it. Well, let's talk about some of the the, uh, the negatives that we experienced because there were a lot of really cool positive moments, but there yeah. were a few things that were kind of, bum- uh, you know, a bummer. And one of them was, well, unfortunately, you were disarmed, Derek J., after you were open carry. Again, <laughs> in all these ways, I keep being disarmed. Uh, yeah, so I can still openly carry, even though I was denied a concealed carry license here in Keene. And uh, I do exercise that freedom as much as possible. And while I was at the fair, I did open carry uh, my Glock 26. And uh, a very polite security man who introduced himself to me the day before came mm-hmm. over and almost apologetically introduced himself as kind of a fan. Like, yeah, he, he was like, "Hey, I've work. seen your movies, or yeah. I've seen your videos, and you know, hey, how's it going?" So that He's was a cop. cool. He is a yeah. cop, yeah, and uh, he was he was very polite to me, and he came over almost like sheepishly apologetic, saying, "Hey, because uh, he's a gun guy, you know, he doesn't like that rule." Sorry, I but uh, they want they want you to take the gun and they just put it away. So yeah. I had to, if I were allowed to conceal, I might just do that, but mm-hmm. instead uh, I had to put it away in in my car. So now, apparently there are there are signs at every entrance that say no firearms. I didn't see any. I never noticed them personally. They they claim they got brand new signs this year. They're okay. Well, I didn't see them. You know, it I happens was paying every attention. Year. 
and I should remember these things, but I almost never remember. It's just like seeing guns carried openly in New Hampshire. I, and I said this to the cop, Jim. You know, I said, look, you know, it's open carry in New Hampshire. And I, I just didn't even think of it. I'm sorry. Because I'm there every year. This was right. your first year. You know, there was another guy, Matt Roach, who uh, was open carrying one year. And uh, and he was asked to to put it away as, as well. Yeah. And it's private property. And this is actually, sure. it was this, that when this happened previously was what led me to learn this. Because, Mark, I don't know if that's the case in like Sarasota, but in a lot of cases, fairgrounds are county or state-owned property, right? It seems like, like it. Yeah. But in Keene, New Hampshire, or in this case in Swansea, which is the town to the south here, this is actually not state-owned property. This is a private grounds, and the Cheshire Fair is a privately held organization. So we absolutely were on their private property, and so you abided by the rules once they were made clear to you. And he wasn't in a rush to disarm me either. We had a long conversation About before guns I did that. About guns and yeah. things like that, yeah. <laughs> And, of course, you only had to put it in your car, so it wasn't like they made you take the car off the property or anything Yeah. Like that. So that was all right. There's more coming up here in moments. It's Free Talk Live. It's so lonely here. I can barely stand it. I'm waiting for you to stroke your keys and unload over GCNlive.com slash community. Oh, come on. I know you have things to share, and there's a whole place waiting for you to share them. Light some candles, pour yourself a drink, and get cozy. Log in at GCNlive.com slash community. Lots of people are satisfied. Why not satisfy yourself at GCNlive.com slash community? I'm waiting. Get out of the friend zone at delicious.com. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a free, a great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. This is your Robertson Roberts Brookridge Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Monday, gold is down $4 at $1,091 per ounce. Silver is $0.07 cents lower at $14.76 per ounce. Bitcoin is trading at $284 U.S. dollars. At Roberts & Roberts, we like buying metals just as much as selling them. Maybe more. To find out how, give me a call, 800-874-9760, or visit our online store at rrbi.co. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. When commercials come on, don't push the button. Instead, listen. Even if you don't sell things for a living, you're still selling in the various conversations and transactions that make up your busy day. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important, especially if you're a job seeker. So take a lesson from Madison Avenue. Often the fewer words, the more effective the message. Like Jiffy Lube, where you never need an appointment, or the Office Max ad that says, you supply the ambition, we supply everything else. How about online ticket broker StubHub.com, the way in when it's sold out, or CyberCupidMatch.com's seductive, go ahead, it's okay to look. 
How cleverly and succinctly can you distill your message? For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Dial toll free. Join us here at 855 450 free. Who else has done Bitcoin outreach at the county fair? We've done it. We've done it two years in a row here in Keene, New Hampshire, and uh, I was just so honored to have the uh, to, to be able to share this booth with you, Derek J. and and Chris Cantwell. You you guys are two of the best I've ever worked with uh, doing oh, thank you. doing outreach. You guys are really you know effusive. You're enthusiastic. You're willing to talk to people. Yeah, you're not there just to hang out, right? I remember when I went and uh, helped you at the uh, the county fair there for a little while. I'm um, it was, it, it's exhausting getting out there and doing that every minute. I did it for what, a couple of hours. Yeah. And I'm like, whew, that's some work. Yeah. Well, I mean, it is some work and especially if you're outside, you were actually, what you're referring to is we were indoors in the air conditioning at the uh, county fair. <laughs> was in it Sarasota. air conditioned there? Yeah, it was air conditioned. We were inside the Roberts arena. Uh, but out here where's, I guess there is an indoor location, but I wouldn't want to be in the indoor spot. I, there seemed like there's more people outside. And so glad we were outdoors we'll talk more about it coming up here because there were some negative sides to it and uh, we'll get into that there's a movement in healthcare today it's a movement of people that's ready to stand up and take charge of their health care it's people like you and me who are tired of paying too much for health care and getting too little people who are standing up for their values and letting their conscience make their decisions based on timeless principles it's a movement that's sweeping the nation and you need to be part of it Liberty HealthShare is leading the mo- this movement of people who are looking for an alternative to traditional health insurance. Liberty HealthShare is a healthcare sharing organization of people who are sharing the cost of healthcare in an easy and efficient way. Choose your own doctor, choose your own hospital, live out your values in healthcare, join the movement, let's take charge of our healthcare for good. LibertyHealthShare.org. 1-855-58-LIBERTY, libertyhealthshare.org, 1-855-58-LIBERTY. So it was very hot at the Cheshire County Fair on a couple of the days. A couple of days was nicer. One day it rained, kind of cooled things off. Uh, but it was pretty hot, like sweltering hot. It was and, in the 90s on yeah. the first day. And 96, I think, was the high. You decided, Derek J., to uh, take your shirt off oh, at yeah. some point. And I was in short shorts, too. Yes, you were. And not the shortest of short shorts. You know, your junk wasn't hanging out or anything like that. But, uh, you know, they were pretty short. Mm-hmm. And so you didn't have a whole lot on in the way of clothes. Didn't bother me none. In fact, you got some compliments on. I got a lot uh, of compliments. On having your shirt hey, off. Hey, you look cool. Right. It's like, yeah, I'm nice and comfortable. I bet you were, you wish you were this comfortable. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) But there was one lady in particular. Actually, there were a couple nasty comments from some people walking by. One lady, that's disgusting. Yeah. And uh, one of the other carnies was uh, insulting to you as well, who later that same carny came around and said he thought that we should be kicked out of the fair. He's just jealous. Because we're not allowed to be hawking, he claims, which is ridiculous. Uh, if I couldn't call out to people at the fair, like, hey, heard about Bitcoin? You know, yelling basically at the people who are sort of across the road from us walking by. There was actually sort of a two-lane situation where there was like a median. And oh, really? Then, yeah. So we were, it was a fairly wide uh, area of the park that we were in. And so uh, even if it was smaller, I'd still be calling out to people. And this this carny came by on like the last day told us he hoped we got kicked out uh next year because we were hawking and you're supposedly not allowed to do that he was like why don't you read your contract like well i have read the contract and if i wasn't allowed to uh you know pitch things to people i wouldn't be here because there's no point in in getting a booth somewhere just to sit quietly behind a table and wait for people to come up and talk to you like the hillary clinton people did yeah i gotta say every time i go anybody every every time i go into these political booths i go over there and you know i take a look or whatever they like can i help you well no 
<laughs> you know, like I, I don't know exactly what you're supposed to help me with. <laughs> so, you know, what, why don't you tell me something that like you've you've yeah. come here for why a reason? Why are you here? <laughs> why are you yeah. so in? <laughs> what? It just it's 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 amazing. People yeah. just go there to sit. The, right. The, both the, both the Republicans and the Democrats almost. And, and it wasn't just like this in uh, in New Hampshire, Derek J. Like I said, I used to do these outreach booths in. Uh, not for Bitcoin, but for Liberty mm-hmm. uh, in Sarasota, Florida. And it was the same thing there, man. These these other political parties, they just sit, they've got their booth usually loaded with stuff, or it's either one or the other, loaded with stuff, like the table just covered full of things, or they'd have one thing on the table. So there was never any kind of medium ground. It was either way too much or almost nothing. Uh, and there was actually a table like that. The John Birchers were there. They just they just had piles of things on this table. You, you couldn't possibly. They, I don't think they even knew everything uh, that they <laughs> they had on, on this table. And uh, so yeah, people just sit quietly, and you've got to pitch people. You got to talk to them and ask them for the order. You've got to get their attention. They're walking by. They got something to do. They're going in that park. They want to see the. The, what was it like some sort of pig race or you know, whatever was going on tractors were running into each other right. <laughs> the demolition derby on sunday so they got something they want to see they wanted to go see uh, whatever with the kids and so we would say things like oh well you know come on back if you got some questions we'll talk later and that a lot of times people would say okay as they're walking by and yeah, then sometimes that's they sort, would and that sort of kind of reserved them when they would come back by because we were right by the entrance which was kind of it had its benefits and uh, it's downsides. So it was hot. You had taken your shirt off. And yeah. then at some point, some lady who works with the park in some kind of motorized wheelchair like device, mm-hmm. she comes over to you. And what was it that, you know, and basically that she told you? She said to me, Hey, uh, I'm going to just warn you that you're going to have to put a shirt on. Uh, now, I'm not, I'm just with information. I'm not security, but Lori. See, she's not as nice as I am, and so I'm I'm going to give you the warning before Lori comes over that you have to put a shirt on, and um, I just smiled, okay, and just didn't put a shirt on. Um, I, later, I did. I felt like, okay, well, sort of things have on, cooled off. off. Yeah, as things cooled off, I put it on. When it got hot, I took it off again, and she came by again, like an hour or so later, mm-hmm. saying... Lori knows. Lori knows. <laughs> so right. I'm supposed to be like, oh, get ready. Now I'm afraid because she's yeah. warned me that, you know, she's the nice version. And she was like, mm. she was okay. But Lori apparently is very mean and nasty, according to this woman. Now, well, what I was telling you at the time was I know Lori and she's the the grounds manager of the, uh, the fair. And her and I have had a very nice relationship. She's been very cordial and very nice. She actually works for the county prosecutor's office as her day job. And this is sort of the other thing she does and so i was like well you know if Lori had a problem with it she'd probably come talk to you and it actually wasn't until the next day i believe when Lori finally did come over well she had been walking by several times throughout the day and never said anything you know i was there shirtless and calling out to people i wasn't hiding in any way right so she had ample opportunity to come up to me and say something and she chose not to so the next day apparently she approached you she did, and yeah, she she seemed to have almost waited till you weren't around, and oh. then she she uh, she approached approached me about it, and you know asked me to have you put some laundry on uh, or whatever, and the claim is is that this is a family park. Should have or put whatever. a bikini top on. See what they did with that. Well, that was my question: was would you do the same thing to a girl in a bikini? Right. And the claim oh, you was, asked that. Yes. Oh, excellent. Yes, and the claim was they would. If the uh-huh. girl was working at, you know, some sort of booth. Okay, so uh, customers of the fair can take their shirts off, but yes. uh, people working there can't. I get all right. So that was the claim, and okay. I would love to test that claim. Actually, bring out a girl in a bikini next time, but we need more girls in bikinis here in New Hampshire. No girl in bikinis uh, getting anywhere near you, pal. Uh, I don't know about that, Mark. There's know. a lot of girls that are into Bitcoin, and if we had one up here, then uh, we might be able to find one willing to I got to tell you, the whole booth babe concept, it works. It's offensive. What do you mean offensive? offensive? It works. What are you talking about? I've gone to these events and these gals uh, at these these things that are sort of paid there to be, you know, 
display meat, uh-huh. that kind of thing, and don't know anything about Bitcoin. Well, yeah, she's going to have to know about Bitcoin, duh. It, this is this. It was the same way at uh, other we need events I've been to. And brains, right? Well, yeah, that 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 part's great, and I'm not I'm not a I have no problem with somebody who looks good and is knowledgeable yeah. about okay. their subject. It's the looking good. No, I got you. I got and you. And then the, not being knowledgeable the vapid about the people that are just that's handing what's flyers offen- out. offensive. That's what a booth babe is. Okay, okay, I got you. Somebody hey. who looks good and understands their um uh, you know their uh their field. They're not of a booth babe. A booth babe right, is somebody fine. who's hired to do a particular job, which is hang out there and be attractive. That th- is offensive. I thought I looked good. I thought so, too. All right, we'll come back with more here uh, in moments. 855, 450 free. And uh, the other crackdown, we'll get into that coming up here as well. It's Free Talk Live. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. All right, don't let anybody tell you that Christmas doesn't come twice a year because now it does at guns80.com. All right, here's the deal. They're going to make it happen twice this year just for you. It truly is Christmas in July. That's right, Christmas in July at guns80.com. A brand new special. A really awesome special every day till the end of the month through this weekend, at least. Guns80.com. Go to Guns80.com. Everyone says or does something silly once in a while. But once that embarrassing thing is on the Internet, it can spread like a terrible rash. Put it to rest. Get a free expert analysis today from Reputation.com. It only takes 30 seconds. 800-831-0771. We protect your online image by helping to make sure that when people search for you or your business, they find the most current, accurate information possible. Reputation.com. Because word travels fast. Call for a free analysis today. 800-831-0771. That's 800-831-0771. Free Talk Live. It's if I'm watching not a cable, just regular news, and they give me the news, and the next flash is two people fornicating, okay? And then every other word is F U, a B I C, a ho, and all mm-hmm. this stuff, and penis. Do you think I need to say that? That's not acceptable no matter what. You're saying free airways for anything goes for anybody. For public access, yes, that's, that's exactly well, its that's purpose. That's acceptable. the purpose of it. Why, why not? Uh, do you want a red light in front of a cop? Uh, probably not in front of a cop because right. he hurt well, what's me. What's the same difference if you're going to have that kind of fu and seeing two people fornicating after they just said the weather is 92 degrees and five well, inches? Wait, I think you're a little confused about something. No, here. I'm not point, confused. Point of information. You're trying to confuse people. Let's let's clarify that. Free airways are free within limits. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from seven to ten Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. 
You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Yeah! Hey, it's Free Talk Live. Dial on in toll free here. And take control of the airwaves. 855 450 free. We're talking about the county fair outreach. Derek J., uh, Cantwell, and myself, as well as several other activists, were doing over the last several days. And we're going to get back into that. You can go and see video footage of the war on chalk uh, that happened at the county fair. You can go there at freekeen.com and see the footage that uh, Derek took of the chalk being erased. We'll tell you about what happened. In a moment. First, Livewire's in New Orleans, listening to WGSO. Hey, Livewire. Hey, how are you doing this evening? Good. Go ahead with your thoughts. Uh, yeah, I wanted to bring up the fact that I can. Ex- uh, I would like y'all to expect, well, I think you can expect that sometime within the next few weeks, within the next month or so, you'll probably wind up getting a call from uh, presidential candidate Donald Trump. Oh, yeah? Oh, Why is that? Uh, well, uh, because we're in I'm Hampshire. extending an invitation to him. Uh, tonight, uh, on your behalf, and because he's such an unorthodox type of candidate, uh, he will need, it will be to his benefit to pick up other media outlets, and yours is such a wonderful program, and there's so many uh, smaller media uh, markets throughout the I United States. I can't tell if elsewhere. you're being serious or facetious. I, I'm, I'm being both facetious and serious, because, again, I'm, I'm inviting him. Uh, I'm a registered independent Eagle voter. Uh, I'm not a Republican, but, however, uh, I'm more and more looking that uh, he's going to be our next president. It's a wonderful situation. What part is the facetious part? Uh, The fact that uh, I don't have any direct connection to him yet, but via this media outlet, which, again, you have a You're never going to get a direct connection to Donald Trump. I mean, he's he's a fat attitude. He's a fancy person. voter is. He's got all kinds of uh, money, and he's got gatekeepers to make sure that you don't get to to reach him. He's got bodyguards and gatekeepers. You'll so never you do it. You wouldn't take a phone call from him if, if he calls you. You wouldn't take a phone anybody call from can him? call Free Talk Live. We take phone calls from absolutely anybody. But the, Donald Trump is the kind of person who's not going to sit and wait on hold. He's not going to call in just like the uh, he's every got other people caller. to wait on hold. He could just. He might just prove you wrong. Okay, great. I well, think he will. All right, great. I look forward to it. Thanks, Livewire. And then I know. hope he can keep from cussing at, cussing on the air. <laughs> <laughs> Why has he got a f- filthy mouth or something? Yeah, I I I, I would imagine that uh, you know given enough given enough goading that <clears throat> that that gentleman would uh, just let loose with a torrent. Oh, really? Yeah, he did get in a fight with uh, El Chapo a little while back. The uh, yeah, Mexican. If he's not careful, board. he's going to be El Dedo. So, uh, yeah, I really, you know, yeah. if he calls in, great. Anybody can call the show. But Let's get back He's going to have to wait on hold just like everybody else. Your chalking activism-related news. Yeah, well, it Free wasn't activism. Live. Hold the on. The center this for chalk-related news. No, <laughs> this isn't chalking activism. This was just fun. I mean, this was just yeah. pure fun. I was not doing activism when I made this little chalk thing. All I was trying to do was give kids, first of all, I, I put a hopscotch of about eight squares in front of the booth. Yep. And it took up Hopscotch the, is the 10 whole squares. length. I don't know what game you were playing. Well, I guess I didn't know any better because Whatever. I did eight. And the eighth it, one was a Bitcoin symbol. Right. So oh, nice. it was very cool. It looked great. We took pictures, so yep. it has been memorialized. Sweet. I left a little rock down there. In fact, the first person to use the Hopscotch was about a 60-year-old man who yeah. wanted to use it before I was even finished drawing it. Mm-hmm. May I? He, he asked. S- he saw an opportunity. Oh, yeah. And uh, the next one was a child who saw a rock, picked it up, threw it, and uh, did the Hopscotch, loved it. So kids were loving this. Adults were loving it. That's right. Adults. Yeah. And kids fair. Alike. <laughs> right. It was, and it was actually not our original idea. It was Ed, uh, who's a local liberty friendly Republican guy. He was working at the Republican booth, mm-hmm. but he likes to come talk and you know hang out with us as well. Spends a lot of time with the Free Staters. Actually, he's a great guy. He came over and told us that he came up with this idea for in front of the Republican booth on a previous day that he had chalked some hopscotch and you know kids were doing it. It was great and people seemed to love it. So uh, apparently, the rain that came the next day had washed it away and. He didn't say that he wasn't told he couldn't do that, but yet 20 minutes after you finished up the uh, hopscotch design, oh, it was a problem. Lori shows up and she tells you to remove it. Mm-hmm. You informed me of this. I happened to be out getting some lunch at the time. I came back. 
and you had not yet removed it at that point. So I went over to the information booth, which is right across the way, and I said, hey, can you call the groundskeeper or the, the grounds manager, Lori, up? I would like to talk to her before I remove this uh, chalking that she asked us to remove. And the lady behind the information booth, uh, she told us she thought it was great. She she also, by the way, supported you being in your short shorts and being topless. Yeah. Uh, and she's probably a good view for her. She thought that, uh, you know, that this hopscotch was awesome. And anybody who stood there for two minutes or three minutes would see somebody go and have fun doing hopscotch in, on this. And so uh, eventually Lori did come around and I talked to her and she was in a nasty mood. She was, I had never seen her like this and maybe it was just a really bad day for her, but she was definitely taking it out on, well, in this case, the children, because she demanded that I remove uh, the chalking. The claim was that it was going to encourage people to block traffic, which is, you know, ridiculous. It was actually, you could argue, maybe even hurrying traffic up because people were hopping faster than they were walking. Mm -hmm. uh, but certainly it was true that a small child did take his time going through it. But it wasn't a problem. There's plenty of room for people to walk around it. There wasn't a, a thronging mass of people trying to exit the park or anything like that. It was just ridiculous. And so uh, I had asked her at this time what I thought was the most relevant question, which was, if there were kids chalking over there, and I pointed to the like the picnic area, if there were kids chalking over there, would you also tell them they had to clean it up? She claimed she would tell the same thing to kids. And I'm sorry, I don't believe that. I mean, I know she was in a grumpy mood, but I can't imagine she would have come up to a seven-year-old who was chalking on the ground in the picnic area and tell them that they had to remove the chalking. I mean, that would just bewilder me if she actually did something like that. It washes away with the rain. Right. So it's not even like something that needs to be immediately cleaned up or it won't go away. But I did. You know, I did start to clean it because yeah. it's private property and that's what I was asked to do. I didn't feel good about doing it, but, but that is ultimately what I did. And then she came over later and added more water to it. She came with a soapy rag and dripped water all over it and, you know, cleaned it even further. I mean, I'd made it unrecognizable. But you can use that word cleaned because it yeah. was like a pitiful attempt. It was attempt. so it was ugly. Just, yeah. after, after I was, I and her had finished with it, it was just like a mess of chalk out in front of uh, of our booth. And it didn't stop kids from trying to play hopscotch oh, either. Really? Because, I didn't yeah, even though it was just a messy chalk uh, smudge on the ground, kids were still hopping through it. So it was just so sad because I guess at one point uh, when I was cleaning it, I didn't notice this, but you did. There was a small child that came up and like looked really dejected. Oh yeah, I got I, was, I got a picture yeah. of of that where his his face is like real sad. Like, what's going on? Why are you ruining the hopscotch? It, it was All so he unnecessary. To do was hopscotch. The I other claim, that. the other claim that she made, besides that it would you know impede people walking, was that you're not allowed to be outside of the booth. Well, wait a minute. Are you saying I can't go and get some lunch? I mean, come on. Obviously, you can leave the booth. What they mean by that rule, supposedly, is that you're not allowed to stand outside of your booth and pitch people. So I can't stand in the road and start offering people things, right? I can't be in the middle of the uh, the walkway. You have to stay in your booth. So is she saying the chalk was an extension of our booth and therefore a violation of the park rules? Okay, fine. Then they went over and they uh, removed the Republicans chalking as well because Ed had also done another hopscotch after we did one. And so, you know, they were enforcing it equally. But boy, what a stupid idea. I mean, just a, cutting your nose off to spite your face. It was just the silliest thing I'd, I'd encountered the entire time. It didn't ruin my day or anything like that. We still had a great time. We still talked to people and, you know, got the word out about Bitcoin. But it certainly ruined the day of at least one small child. And that wasn't cool. In a positive twist, the next day, that woman who came over to me in the um, motorized chair actually called me over to her and said, hey, you know, when you got a minute, come on over here mm -hmm. and apologize. Sincerely gave really? a great apology saying, you know, I didn't mean anything bad by it. I just want to follow the rules of the park right. and, you know, nothing personal. And, and that I, I appreciated that apology. I thought, I thought you would. She actually came up to nice. me the previous day and apologized. And you weren't around at that time. And I said to her, well, you know, I'm sure Derek would appreciate it if the next time you saw him that you if you would say something to him. So I'm glad to hear that she did that because I didn't know that until just pretty much just now. Yeah. So that's good to know. And, you know, overall, it was a wonderful experience. We reached so many people with the ideas of Bitcoin, uh, whether shirtless or shirt on. And I thought it was uh, well worth the time and the effort. I'm glad you agreed. I'm glad you you had fun and it helped us, you know, perfect our pitch and really get the word out there. Oh, yeah. What a great opportunity for there's all different kinds of people out in the world who could benefit from using Bitcoin. And so this gave me an opportunity to exercise a, a different 
variety of uh, benefits that, that Bitcoin lends to different kinds of people. A couple of other Even quick, farmers. quick uh, observations. There was one little kid that uh, this free stater brought up to come up to the booth. Like He was super excited about Bitcoin. This guy couldn't have been older than five or something like that. Really? Yeah, and this guy was super into Bitcoin, and it was just so cool to see that. You he know, played a Bitcoin game on his uh, little smartphone. Yeah, like some sort of Bitcoin investor, or Bitcoin billionaire, I think is what it was called. By the end of the week, I was just pitching the kids. I didn't even want to talk to the adults. <laughs> the kids were way more excited about Bitcoin, and yeah, they but, got it. But you couldn't... You, the one th- rule that you'll learn doing this fair outreach booth is you can't prejudge people. So sometimes elderly people are interested True. and you can't let them walk by if uh, you know if they're going to walk by. Also, I got to uh, give one of my jail buddies a Bitcoin wallet, which is kind of <laughs> cool as well. Uh, so anyway, we'll see you tomorrow night. Check out Derek at thederekj.com and us at freetalklive.com. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Which one you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. Hey, 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 hey. Who do you think Excuse you are? Excuse me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait a minute. Now. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared of property. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, August 3rd, 2015. Silver is trading at $14.72 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,092 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $286. Antiwar.com reports with Kurdish warplanes continuing to pound their site in northern Iraq, the Kurdistan Workers' Party, PKK, has launched multiple attacks against the Turkish military yesterday, killing three and wounding dozens of others, some of them seriously. The larger attack was a suicide bombing by PKK militants driving a tractor full of explosives who attacked a military outpost near the border with Iran. The blast killed two Turkish soldiers and wounded 31 others. The toll is expected to rise as at least four or in grave condition. Another attack overnight targeted 